dollar assignment in the English Sprint. A lot of... Is there a standout amongst the 19 for the English Sprint? I love the parade of Mumbai Muse. I thought this filly looked outstanding in the yard. She's a real athlete. She's... With Mumbai Muse there and the Sportsbet punters will be pretty pleased with that because $13 into nine and fourth best back with us here at Sportsbet has seen some good support as well. Estrella still your best back to you. Into $3.10, seeing a little late push, three thirty now into... Right quick! Set to go racing... Aura Boris jumped away quickly. Robrick away smartly. Estriella away smoothly as well. Over on the far side, Navy King is showing a little bit of speed with Raikoki also. They are going to split over towards the flat side. The front runner is Estriella with Navy King, and they were followed by Dasonic Boom and Raikoki from Frawley and Carhoff. In that group of horses, Mumbai Muse, and they were followed by Midnight Opal and Robrick and Chevron. Coming up the middle, Brazen Style led coincide, and they were followed by Cabellus West of Dolby. Up the outside is Ouroboros and then came Cadol, well back Mancier with Lazago and centre Fi. So they reach the course proper at the 500 metres. It's Estriella under a hold leading a length to Navy King who's full bore under pressure. Then Raikoki to Sonic Boom. Up the outside Cabellus Ouroboros followed by Cadol and Brazen Style. Estriella 250 metres to go. Still a good two lengths. Raikoki and Cabellus the outside and Robrick running on. Estriella 100 metres to go, look to be well and truly in front, Estriella getting weary, Robrick is eating up the ground but Estriella will do enough for the big prize, one at three quarters, Robrick second, third Cabalas and they were followed by a photo, prominent was Mumbai Muse with Raikoki Mancier and they were followed next by uh, Navy Kiglers west of Dolby along with Cohen Side and Lazaga On, she gets it done from the front, up the straight in the million dollar English sprint and to figure out why the heck John Allen went to Gosford on a Thursday in winter last year because she continues to, <clears throat> pardon me... Uh, Not contagious, I hope. Uh, <laughs> wow. The, the four-year anniversary of a million-dollar buyout of an English Easter sale. She's running clearly to expectations, grabbed the $200,000 English pink bonus yesterday as well. She's all clapping to Jane too when she's spoken about this horse. There's still upside as well um, in terms of her parades and how she presents at the racetrack, so... Raw talent and quite an exciting filly going forward. And I am um, the best backed of the entire day, albeit just a little bit of a drift in the market. Maybe just opened up a touch too short, according to the punters. And again, a pretty good field. So plenty of money coming elsewhere as well. Second elect in the market there with V8, $7 into $5.50 has been pretty well spec. King Colorado just drifting out to eight there. Snow Patrol and Southport. Snow Patrol and Southport Tycoon again just firming $18.12 now out to $14.12 into a Derby in 2022. To Luna Fox at an SP of 300 to 1 in 2021. And of course, Alligator Blood taking this race out back in 2020. It's been a rich decade. The 39th running of the Howden Australian Guineas. Jane Ivel, your pick of the three year olds. Look, a difficult, difficult yard. I'm with the class horses. I thought the three at the top of the book were the three that paraded the best. I've gone with V8 on top, but it's the fittest. Rocket here up the top of the market turned into a massive liability for Sportsbet here. We're more than happy to keep that price around the $2.40 price tag. Out to two forty five now, but we continue to take bucket loads of cash on the favourite here. V8, $7 into $5.50, your next best back. What you see is what you $12 out to $13. Southport Tycoon, well supported, albeit $12 out to $16 is the drift today and zip away well in the Australian guineas for dad from barrier number three broke away well with hey fat cat v8 the pendragon from the deep and just behind those horses southport tycoon they were followed next in the field by cap Ferrar using its draw to get to about fifth they were followed by otago next is snow patrol deeper around the outside zip away and then riff rock at the fence a length run harry run also in that group of horses settling down as quintessa and also king colorado Apulia was wide, had to snag back Vieste second last and at the end of the field as they settle down into stride is Sunsets so the front run of the Pendragon at the 900 metres, led by a length and a quarter in second Hay Fat Cat and they were followed by Vedad third was three quarters of a length in front and won the Australian Guineas, Southport Tycoon a length and a quarter, V8, Riff Rocket third Quintessa four, they were followed by Vedad, next Otago Cap Ferrar then Hay Fat Cat followed by King Colorado, next Zip Away Snow Patrol, Run Harry Run, well back Sunsets, the Pendragon knocked up and Fieste has finished last of all. They're shouting all over the course. Nathan Bennett in the middle of hugs, emotional scenes. Comes the first since Heart of Dreams 15 years ago to come through the Autumn Stakes. 
and win the three-year-old feature in the autumn. Second in the Australia Stakes win, rushing at V8 late. Second to Snow Patrol in a ding-dong battle in the autumn stakes. All that's in the rear. She couldn't have rode the horse any, any better. Uh, Travelled, followed V8 into the race. V8, you know he's going to, you know, he's a genuine, genuine horse. And I was very confident coming down the straight, uh, watching it. And uh, couldn't wait to talk to you two guys again, actually. We love chatting to you. And then you were chatting to Nathan. For Tycoon, and speaking to Jamie post-race, she was very clear in terms of the game plan going in. Hutches, she wanted the back of V8. She found Damien Lane, and in the end, that was the pathway to reversing the Quinella. We saw those horses run first up this preparation in an Australia Stakes. Yeah, that's where she won it there. Positive early, made a couple work, and then backed into a beautiful spot. Let's not forget yesterday, you know, he needed to be in that front third of the field. The, the Southerly was pretty strong. It was a clear pattern. And you can't understate, you know, good barriers and, and settling position. Poor Tycoon Cap Farrar. They were followed by Snow Patrol, and behind them, Riff Rocket. So the front runner now, V8. Claims Hey Fat Cat, but Southport Tycoon looks the danger. V8 about a neck in front. Southport Tycoon moves up boldly. Southport Tycoon takes the lead, draws a neck, draws three quarters of a length in front and won the Australian Guineas. Southport Tycoon a length and a quarter. V8, Riff Rocket third, Quintessa four. They were followed by Vadad. The Next past couple of years, Hitotsu off a derby win a couple of years ago and his first Victorian Group 1 in his own right, of course, since the move of... Dave Eustace to Hong Kong, Kieran's first group one. Um, all, all factors. V8 was brave, I thought. For sure. No doubt Southport Tycoon was the forgotten horse in the end, wasn't yeah, he? He was a short price uh, favourite in the previous. We were all Go talking on. about uh, that fantastic run. <clears throat> they don't want to be poor cold, cold water on what was a, a good race and a uh, great story, but there is a huge query over the strength of these three-year-olds in general. So uh, they seem to take turns and when they... So Southport Tycoon and a few, maybe one of a couple of them will head towards an all-star mile. I'll have to be against them, against the older horses. I don't think we've had... We haven't had a three-year-old winner. Well, we ones. say that, but V8 got better length than a quarter or so by Mr Brightside. Um, I was against him yesterday. I wasn't sure about a mile, and I think he saw it out fine. I think he was just beaten by a better one on the day. I think Riff Rocket's pretty handy. One on the day. I think Riff Rocket's pretty handy, and I, the second up, maybe, just so brilliant, over 1,400 fresh up, maybe looking for further. Maybe it was the pattern yesterday. We're seeing it a lot now. Three. In the sports bed market, very, very similar holds between them. So the punt is struggling to separate the top three. A tissue, $4 into $3.30 has been a pretty good move up the top. Ayrton can always surprise. $4.60 out to $5 there. Well supported. Carini is the second best back in this one, albeit the third line of betting here. Six dollars. Attendant required with a tissue. They stand pretty well. Racing now. And Ayrton from barrier number one bounced away well. Speed towards the outside. A bit of pace shown by a tissue with Carini and also Arale the bolter and Holy Mans is probing up. So it's the bolter of the field, Arale, going to the lead after 350 metres by about two lengths, Holy Mans, Ayrton, Carini, and they were followed by a tissue with the trail. Barclay Square is next, and they were followed by Cadre de Noir. Three quarters of a length away, Future History, Macram, Suzuro and Panfield. Well back, Bustler, Mura, Massa and Captain Envious. Arale, 1,000 metres from home, led by about a half length, Carini, a length and a quarter, Ayrton, box seat and then Holy Mans. Two further back at Tissue, a length and a half. Cadre du Noir, and then came Macram and Barclay Square. Carini up to Arale, 300 metres to go. Then came Holy Mans. Ayrton needs a run badly, and a Tissue is joining issue the outside at the 200. A Tissue up to Holy Mans and Carini. A Tissue gets its neck in front of Holy Mans. Carini, Ayrton and Macram. A Tissue clear. She'll be the sixth mare to win it. A Tissue scored three quarters. Second Holy Mans, I'd say. Ayrton was in that as well. And then Carini and Macram together for four. Behind them, Cadre du Noir and Barclay Square from Suzuro. Then came Captain Envious. Behind them, Mura Massa. He company then... <laughs> and the 70th blamey taken out by a tissue doesn't she just love flemington was a non-factor in the all fresh but gets back to hq where we've seen her run so well on derby day the last two years and then even better on champions day the last two years it was a better run in the all than it looked on paper she got going late but um you know and obviously caulfield's not as good the real credit here i mean second up flemington yes what you said is exactly right but blake shin yep. saw a pattern 
identified it, wrote accordingly. Could have been posted 3D but at this point. He ends up getting the back of Holy Man's. Look at this bit of writing here. And uh, he slots in and, well, pretty easy for a group race, that's for sure. And all of a sudden she's, what, five lengths closer than she normally is? And uh, that was a huge difference. Let's take in. Just a brilliant ride from Blake Sheen. And the other thing... Yeah, I do think a tissue improves into a preparation. You look at last campaign, uh, how well she went in the Empire Rose and the Champion Stakes and how far she was beaten by Fangirl and Mr Brightside at her previous start. So I think there's room for improvement yeah. from her. But she I'm with you. She's on form. I mean, she's a, you know an Empire Rose, a Group 1 form. She looked on paper. The worry yesterday when you went into the race is, well, she can win, but she's going to be back last. And then all of a sudden, well, that was taken out of the equation. But what Matt says is a very... ...to some racing trivia nights because he rattled off all the successful favourites over the years. But Mr Brightside, oh, here's one. your headline. Miss Probable. Oh, I've given you a pump-up. <laughs> Don't focus on side. He's Fortune. going to be the shortest price favourite in all-star mile history. There's your headline. He's $1.90. Now, these have been the favourites... ...thrown interlinked at $11, flying the flag... Over here in Australia, eight fifty out to eleven dollars. Just as sharp, fifteen dollars. Moss Invader, sixteen, and then forty-one for the rest, or more, for that matter. A dollar thirty-five, though. That is rock bottom. We'll see whether anything. We're ready. The million dollar trackside New Zealand Derby for twenty twenty-four. And favourite is in Barrier Ten Orchestral. Let's bring it on. Gates open. They're off. And the trackside New Zealand Derby and Antrim Coast from the inside began quickly. Renegade Rebels just a wee bit wayward in the early stages from his inside draw. Going forward also now is uh, uh, what you wish for with them as first innings. And pushing forward as well as High Country. And from the deep, we've got Perfect Man's Cinnamon is going to posse up handy as well. And the favourite orchestral, she'll settle back fifth last. So at the judge, as on the first to trackside New Zealand Derby, there is 20 lengths over the field. And the leader is High Country. Came up for here and eases the tempo from Perfect Man's as they climb the rise. First innings and interlinked both get nice runs and behind the speed. Then came Antrim Coast from Cinnamon. Then the stable mates have seen the throne on the inside of what you wish for. Solidifies racing three wide. Two links away. Orchestral just inching a little bit closer. The odds on pop inside the 800 metres. Then came Moss Invader, Renegade Rebel, just as sharp. Further back is Anaroa. Uh, with them also transcend as they come towards a home turn. And then came Monday Melody. And last Last of all, a city gold ready. The fireworks about to happen in the trackside New Zealand derby as they come towards a home turn. And the leader, High Country, orchestral. She's the, the near the widest of all here. She's starting to close now. And behind them, then, as they hit for home, we've got into link. But orchestral, she's bounded up to them. Ellerslie erupts and she takes the lead. Orchestral, too clear from us in the throne. And from Coast going a cheeky race. Further back, then, is just as sharp as they go to the 100 metres. It's the side we all envisage it is going to be orchestral and orchestral masterpiece in the derby second over as they went across what a run in from coast and then came ascend the throne from just as sharp interlinked further back in the field we had transcend running on followed by with moss and vader and back near the tail anaroa Stunning. What a filly we have just seen, Richo. So the first filly to win the derby in a decade, basically, and she's absolutely brained them. So off to Sydney for the Vinery. I bet you J-Max looked at that and thought, I cannot wait to get back on her. He's probably, uh, he's got his connections to already make the call. Um, Craig Grills, he knew what was underneath, didn't he? He just, he was able, he was willing to cover extra ground to make sure that Bad luck did not get in her way, and she thrashed them. Roger James himself gets a sixth derby. Emma, that was oh so sweet. Oh, wasn't On Cracker Millions Day, and similar here, a one-act affair from this star daughter of Sava Bill, who we're going to see here in all likelihood go to the Vinery, of course, the stable Roger James and Robert Wellwood winning it last year with Press. So we've got a good measuring stick on, on her talents, and who knows what she might be capable of in our spring. Um, I know, Ben, you haven't been a fan of the three-year-olds. This might be the one that needs to stand up. There's always one or two, and she might be the one. Yeah, well, we've seen the, the Kiwi fillies do such a good job in the Sydney autumn year after year, haven't we? We saw a good one last year as well. So, um, 
She probably favourite or close to it in the morning. Yeah, dollar thirty in that race. She sat back, rounded them up, won very easy. She's pretty special. You're across the New Zealand. Special. You're across the New Zealand ratings and times. Yeah. Um, how does she measure no, up very, some of the good ones? Very yeah. highly. So yeah. yeah, she's special, no doubt about it. Boy is a dollar fifteen now at a dollar eighteen, which doesn't sound like a, a huge difference. And I'm sure for plenty of punters who find that too short, that is the case. So to those punters, I say we actually have a favourite out market, something that usually you don't see unless black caviar. Are the six to four favourite for the slipper and the rough and Stormboy jumped it all right indecisive and Proster jumped fast but Stormboy will use the inside gate and he rolls forward the big boy and Stormboy takes the lead narrowly in the early stages of the race from Saron. Indecisive taken back now then Prost on the outside of Giovanna President and Parkour sees them all. 800 metres to go and Stormboy wants to go quicker. McDonald's got a good grip on the colt and Stormboy leads by two and a half to Saron. Giovanna is railing through improving. Indecisive we've covered down. The outside of Prost is down on the fence. A length to President trucking along. A half the inside to Parkour. 5.50 to go and Storm Boy, who's the raging favourite for the slipper. A dollar eighteen here in the skyline as they turn for home. And he comes well off the fence now. And Storm Boy still under a good grip. Giovanna scrubbed up the inside. Prost revved up coming down the outside. He gives the favourite some rain now, Storm Boy. He's two lengths clear inside the 150 from Prost and Giovanna. They're fighting out the miners. But you can see what all the fuss is about. The multi-million dollar cult Storm Boy wins at a cake. Walk, Pross best of the rest second, Giovanna third, then Parkour. Further back to President Saron and Indecisive. Well, he got the job done. He looked fantastic. James will be absolutely over the moon. Relief for Adrian, relief for Gay. Pross was good. Devano a good. Kiora started going to be happy. Lizzie, but a big tick to a big horse, isn't he? We needed to see him do it today, and he's ticked that box. He now remains unbeaten. I will have to say it. They gave it to him. They never served it up to him. That's probably the easiest run that he's had throughout, I think, his whole entire career. I think that uh, there's a lot of, of him, and he ended up at $1.04 in the end. So very, very short quote. It's a one-horse affair. They are just so keen to back Manal here, and it would be... A pretty bleak scenario from a tab side of things if Manal were to salute. Chateau Miraval is the extreme diva. The favourite Manal in the white cap wedge between runners with wave breaker pushing through underneath. Further back to Montana, Dawn Vala bling out deep from Astride. And the last two extreme diva firing up on the inside of Fly Fly. Chateau Miraval lands in the lead here by a half on photographics to Tokers three out. Then Diddle dumpling over on the inside of wave breaker. Manal three wide with some cover. Further back Vala bling off the course then came Zunaka Montana Dawn Astride Fly Fly Extreme Diva going up the rails they come up the rise now and Shadow Miraval is revved up Diddle Dumpling doing the chase in the inside and now Manal is starting to wind up wide out and quickly Manal moved up to join Shadow Miraval Fly Fly and Extreme Diva are powering home it's Manal in front of Fly Fly Manal a length and a half to Fly Fly and Manal too good in the sweet embrace beat Fly Fly Extreme Diva third Shadow Miraval fourth, then Diddle Dumpling further back to didn't about that, but Manal covered a bit of ground. Tommy knew he was on the best filly. We now look at her CV. It ticks so many boxes going into a Golden Slipper Stakes. It does. A gym crack winner. Then she returned nicely uh, first up in the Widden. She was beaten by Lady of Camelot, who's franked that form going into a Blue Diamond and ran a credible second behind Heiyasugi. And then she's met up against another bunch of quality fillies and been able to win, I think, pretty easily. When you were watching her at the top of the straight... ...to the very elegant stakes in honour of the 11-time Group 1 winning mare, who won the race twice. She's brave, she lives, and she wins her second chipping daughter in it. The 1600 metre Group 1 Wait for Age feature, originally held at Warwick Farm before moving permanently to Randwick in 2016. Has what an honour roll. There's the trophy for the very first running of the very elegant sax. Tom Mark one. Aussie Tom's been talking at $1.30 now about Fangirl. So for those thinking at home, right, $1.30, what's the probability of winning? Well, according to the traders, that has the implied probability about 76 and a bit percent. So in terms of our hold, which is around 67%, you would say there's a little bit of room to move still, but the tab holds are only a small part of the tail. Sink it over at $9, just fine at $12. 13 for Lindemann, out from 11. Cascadian, 15 to 19. Navajo Peaks. Stand by. 
30 about Van Girl, they're off and racing. She'll set a last from the outside draw. Just fine pumped out of the gates. Linderman bounded there, but just fine just in front of Linderman. Navajo Peak moves to third on the outside of Think It Over. Two lengths to Athabaskan, then came Arapaho, Cascadian, and the long odds on favourite Fangirl parks on the outside and settles about nine lengths off the lead, which is just fine. The Metropolitan winner galloping hard in the lead by two lengths on Linderman, who's got to a clear second, so there should be no traffic issues today for Linderman. Two and a half for the back to Navajo Peak. The pace is solid. Then think it over. Fourth is about four off the lead. A gap of three to Athabaskan, then came Arapaho from Cascadian. Cascadian and Fangirl up on the outsides. Last of all, 800 metres to go. Just fine, looking to protect his unbeaten record at the track. Leads by two lengths on Linderman. A gap to Navajo Peak. Think it over, quietly in the rails. Further back to Arapaho from Athabaskan. McDonald sitting pretty quiet on Fangirl. Second last on the outside of Cascadian. 500 to go now. Just fine's coming well off the fence. Linderman goes with him. Nash is staying towards the inside of Think It Over. And he's pinched ground pretty quick. Quickly and think it over, dashes to the front of the 300 from Linderman. And now Fangirl is starting to cut loose, wide out three off the lead. It's think it over, a length to Linderman. Fangirl is closing in. It's think it over, a length and a half to Fangirl. Think it over is kicking hard. Think it over wants it. Fangirl can't get there. And the king of Kembla, think it over, was able to beat Fangirl about a length on the wire. Then came Linderman from Cascadian, further back to Arapaho. Athabaskan, Navajo Peak, just fine, weekend to finish last. He's a remarkable oh. animal, isn't he, Lizzie? I mean, you think about this horse and the injury, a big, big injury. He won a Liverpool City Cup on this day three years ago. He now gets his third group one, and Nash has done it again. He's such a clever rider. James Rowe confidently rode like he was on the best horse. She looked to have a chance late, but he's held her off. I just love this horse, Lizzie. He is an absolute star, but I think the guy on his... First running of the rebadged Chipping Norton, now known as the Very Elegant Stakes, named after, of course, the former great race mayor who was a two-time winner of this race. And we did have an upset. Chris Waller was harbouring ambitions to win the race, of course, named after his champion mayor, with another great mayor of his own in Fangirl, who's parked at the back there in the Cerise Silks. But it was Think It Over, Nash getting it done, holding the rail to the inside here. 69th Group 1 and the third Group 1 for Think It Over, of course, going alongside his George Ryder of 2021. And Queen Elizabeth, also very, with a very stylish ride in 2022. Yeah, I mean, the key was, as, the, as you said, the, that point on the turn, he cut the corner, then got to the part of the track he wanted. I don't know, punders on the floor with Fangirl, but um, I, as soon as there was a bit of rain about, the track was a bit shifty, guys. I know it's easy afterwards, but, you know, if she's going to become undone, it's something along those lines, I think, that would probably bring her undone. Um, that said, you'd still expected her to win yesterday. Yeah, and, yeah, you, you need to see all the um, sectionals relative to the rest of the day and how the race broke down, don't you, before you can make a judgment. Did she have to do too much work in the mid stages? Did she regress second up as she has done in previous preparations? But uh, I think, like you said, the the deteriorating track was probably against yeah. her. So you know, I think she's probably run really well. It was yeah. just she was in hindsight, and it's easy to say in hindsight um, she was. Well, too you're short. taking on the other, you know, really talented horses, and you know, ultimately Nash has sort of won up with a ride. Like I said, he cut the corner, and got out. She's run on really well. Yep. It becomes a mathematical impossibility. It becomes harder. And the other thing is, you know, so flattering to start before on the on a race shape that probably really suited her and on top of the ground. So I dare say she's gone pretty close to what, how she ran the other day. That's no tonic for those that but took the dollar thirty though. Talk of horses. You too. You got a lot of nephews, and they're all got different surnames to you. Which, unless you learn Confusing. the family tree, it can get a little weird and wonderful, which is what we love. That... So occupying about 35% of the hold, we have Learning to Fly, which is our favourite, but is drifting about half a point, a point from our opening price this morning, which was $2.80. Now out to $3.40, so has gone excess of that half a point. Kamachi, $5.50. Tis Invincible is the second best backed runner in the race at $6.50. Then we have Tropical Squall, Macarena at $9.50, Roll On High, and Steffi Magnetica is actually the third best backed runner in the race, $26 into $16. 
15. Behind that in terms of money, help and probably about to get a trim in if Lizzie puts her hand in her pocket one more time. What's gambling really costing you? From Tropical Squall will lead from the stable made Autumn Ballet. And moving forward on the outside, there is Learning to Fly. They're followed by Tis Invincible, Steffi Magnetica. Now Macarena's out wide, slowly rolling forward on the outside of Chris Dilly. Then came Tura La Vida. Kamachi's further back in the field today from Roll on High Arctic Glamour. And Zardozzi's last of all. Tropical Squall holds the front. Macarena's doing plenty of work up on the outside of Learning to Fly, who's got that far more prominent role today, holding third. Steffi Magnetica on the fence, fourth. Tis Invincible covering a bit of ground from Autumn Ballet. Chris Dilly's off the track. Then came Tura La Vida from Kamachi. Roland High moves up the outside. So Kamachi a bit cluttered up now, followed by Artic Glamour and Zardozia both pulling water on the track as they come around the turn. Hieronymus on Tropical Squall starts to wind it up. Staying close to the fence, though, from Macarena. Steffi Magnetica straying on the fence and now learning to fly wound up. Two further back to Chris Dilly. Tis Invincible's got it all to do. Inside the 200, Tropical Squall led the way. Up on the inside, Steffi Magnetica. Learning to fly is grinding. Tropical Squall's kicking hard. Steffi's in for the fight. Tropical Squall and neck in front to Steffi Magnetica. Tropical Squall clings on. Tropical Squall and Adam Hieronymus combined for another Group 1 success. Just beating a game, Steffi Magnetica. Then came Learning to Fly Macarena and Tutta Levita closing off. Further back, Kamachi. Then roll on high, Tis Invincible, Autumn Ballet. Uh, well back, Chris Dilly, Zardozzi and Arctic Glamour. It was a terrific ride by the hippo. He absolutely controlled it. The pace was uh, moderate early, and then he was able to wind it up. He was exposed a bit early in the straight, Lizzie, but that's the style. So a flight stakes winner. What does hippo get? He gets his fourth group one. Adrian gets his 25th group one. And Gay gets to 159, Lizzie. Quite an achievement, isn't it? And a very good ride. And it was bit of farcical pace in the end. You could see that a few of them were a Lechney initiative and he was able to really dominate and that was what happened because nothing could really make any ground the speed that they went. Steffi Magnetica was the horse that was really fit and had had plenty of racing on her side. Preparation, preparation, just with the way that the track was playing today, sort of race for a record fifth time but it's the first time she's won it since it's been a group one. And Adrian, of course, with her now. So we move from... Phillies, 1,400 metre group won the surround yesterday and Tropical Squall, great result for Adam Hieronymus to get this done from the front on the flight stakes winner in the spring, the 25th, 25th, sorry, group one in the history of the training partnership of Gay Wardhouse and Adrian Bott and the fifth win in this race for the stable. Yeah, really good. I mean, the disappointment was learning to fly, seemed to have a good run. Mm, even finish when it was uh, was decent. Tropical Squall, I thought, was underrated by the market, really. When you looked at her preparation last time in, Ben, she'd, you know, beaten a lot of those horses before and done it in a similar vein. So, yeah, it was a, it was a good performance. Probably kept to the mile. It's going to be best for her in future. You know, she ran wells, Queen of the Turfs, etc. Hard to miss the run of Roll on High when they sprinted in an on-pace race. She looked to be floundering for 100 metres or so, but the last 150 of Roland High was probably the best in the race. So yep. uh, run under the... The other big scratching, which was our favourite out of this race this morning. So with Alencia out, Osbred Flirt, $12 was the open. That sort of didn't exist. 32 cents worth of deduction. So around the $8 into $3.30, still a very good go and is the best supported runner easily more than that of Hinged or Jewess. More secret or Jewess. More Secrets at $7. Hell Hath No Fury, 14. Barbie's Fox at... Racing. Oh, Hosbred flirts. Fluff the start. She's last. And Hinge jump well. Miss Coover's up on the speed. Miss Coover's having a little crack for the lead and getting it. Then Miss Fabergé. Hell Hath No Fury. Dewis parked right behind. Inside Barbie's Fox. So Miss Coover trying to cause an upset. Leads inside the 750 from Hinged. Then Miss Fabergé on the inside of Hell Hath No Fury. Nash starting a run on Dewis. He pulls her out. Three wide improving. Coming to the turn. More secrets close to heels. Barbie's Fox revved up. Osbred Flirt will be ridden for luck. Miss Coover turns the corner in front. Hinged under a determined right now on the outside. 
outside. Miss Fabergé goes to the rails. Then came Hell Hath No Fury. Miss Coover giving a sight, a good sight. At the 250, Hinged is slowly getting there. Hell Hath No Fury, Miss Fabergé. Osbred flirts running on. Hinged got to the front from Hell Hath No Fury. Hinged and Hell Hath No Fury. It's going to be close. Very close. Hell Hath No Fury bobbed it Hinged. More secrets third, then Miss Fabergé, followed by Barbie's Fox. Further back to Osbred Flirt, Miss Coover, and Lewis. Photo here. Interestingly, Ben was mentioning that Hell Have No Fury had been backed from $51 into uh, single figures. And you can see the two cut. Oh, I still can't tell at that stage, Bruce. I think the outside's got up, but I'm not 100% sure. The well, eight. Well, we can't see. Yeah, well, I think it has, because we can't see the insides. Mm. Thought. OK, there's not many in there, so I'll throw the nom in. And they've got themselves a group too. How important that is for a hellbent filly. Yeah, Cold Crusher is our favourite here. It is the second best in the market, a few bucks. Wind Chat, technically, though, the best backed on the second line at $4. Now, we've got 14 cents worth of deduction. You mentioned a known fresh horse, six out to eight. New Energy, Energy. Now, you guys have known fresh horse, six out to eight. New Energy. Now, you guys have made a big deal of this galloper, and fair enough, too. There's been a lot of interest in it. But the money's dried up today. Right. Right. Set now. Let's go. Clear. And they're off and racing. Cold Crusher anticipated the start brilliantly. Wind Chap was only fairly out. So Cold Crusher leads with Fearson on the scene. Golden Mile on the scene. And Wind Chat's out very wide. He's got some work to do. Rolling on with the job. Hard to say. Camps in fifth behind them. Then Dark Dream from New Energy. Caesars Palace. A length and a half further back to Kovalika down on the rails. Cepheus is outside. And Democracy Manifest sees them all. Righto. Wind Chat's done some work here. Really moving up now to serve it up to Fierce and Jay Ford has to just sit up a bit now on Wind Chat. He's done plenty to get on the outside of Fierce and Cole Crusher. Schiller was happy to take the sit. Then hard to say, Golden Mile. Dark Dream's gone already. Further back to Caesars Palace. New Energy slicing through the middle. Kovalika getting onto its back from Cepheus. Democracy Manifest. The fence last. Fierce and leads into the straight from Wind Chat. Cole Crusher stoked up. Two lengths to Golden Mile under pressure. Back on the inside. Hard to say. New Energy Kovalika down the outside. Fearson shows the way at the 200. Two in front to Cole Crusher. Hard to say he's running on, but Fearson won't stop. Fearson keeps going. Fearson at big odds. Fearson's going to lead all the way. Thundering home New Energy into second. Hard to say third, followed by Kovalika, then Cole Crusher. Democracy money. Result for him with Brad Widdup. New Energy had an absolute star alongside his name, and I thought Kovalika was good as well. But what a great win, front-running win. Oh, very good win, wasn't it? And, and he gets better during the preparation as well, so very good to see him back and just a very smart ride to be able to take. Mention New Energy. I think if Richard and I could have our black book and our horse to follow again, I think he would be going right into it. Oh, big watch on him, as was Kobalika. About to send the furlong gallop here, and this is the size produce for the two-year-olds. Really? SS security size produce stakes for the... Two-year-olds at Group 2 level over 1,400 metres. I've gone with the seven and evaporate. I just like the way he's come on with a little bit of racing. He was very green on debut, but he's... $3.50 the field. Aardvark has his nose in front of Ruta Royale and they clear out in terms of turnover, but, geez, punters getting involved at some... Yeah, and racing at the 1,400. Vianara out the back early with also cheers. La Bella Bondi began quickly, showing speed traffic warden from that outside stall and will lead today from booting in between horses there, Flyer, and also untapped La Bella Bondi in that group of horses. Aardvark got to about fifth, followed by Evaporate a little wide. A length and a quarter away, Bazasto, Ruta Royale. They were followed by Poisson's power outside of Cheers as they run by the 850. About a length and a half away, Shilut. And then came Vianara. And at the tail of the field is Ponte Arcabaleno. And also out deeper on the track, it's Peru about fourth last. Coming up towards the 650 metres. And the front runner is Traffic Warden by a length and a quarter, untap La Bella Bondi. Out to deeper on the course is Flyer in the black distinguishing cap. Aardvark given plenty of air. Bazasto is tracking it. Ruta Royale's behind that wall as well. Further back is Cheers. And then came Evaporate out wider under the whip. Peru and also Shalut. 350 to go. Traffic Warden given its head. Kick two lengths. Aardvark under pressure coming through. Bazasto and Flyer. And Ruta Royale is also weaving a passage. Traffic Warden at the 150. Still a good margin. It's three lengths, Ruta Royale. And then Bazasto. Traffic Warden going strongly with 50 metres to 
to go. Nurse to the line from the outside. Draw at 1,400. A big winner. Traffic Warden from Ruta Royale. Bazasto for fourth. Peru or Vianara followed by Flyer. Then came Aardvark, Evaporate and La Bella Bondi. Poisson's power. James Cummings got the size produce done with a filly. The last to win the race in La 10 in 2019. And here it's the son of Street Boss. What a sorry he's been for the Dali operation. And Boss was the second of Jamie Carr's victories on the day in the press last year. She wins it on Traffic Warden and the effort, Ben, to make the decision early in the race to offset Traffic Warden's wide draw off his good closing effort when eighth in the Blue Diamond just again showed she's well and truly got her mojo back. Yeah, I think that was where he won the race, out of the gates, nice and positive, went to the front and controlled things and was able to give a good kick. Uh, not a bad effort, you'll see. Just poking through a narrow gap there from Bazasto, who ran third. Ruderio back to the inside, run OK. I'm not sure this is A grade form going forward, though. Um, Traffic Warden's been dominant and done well, but uh, it's going to get a lot tougher if any of them head to Sydney. Well, that would seem the logical path for particularly that top three compliment Ruta Royale has been to see. Just ride your horses to suit your horses. Here we go. This is the feature. It's all about the mare. Nine-time group one winner in Peritris and uh, she's here to play. Don't worry about that, folks. We opened up at 2.35 and she's rock solid on race day. $2.50. She's the one they have to beat from that inner barrier. And the return on that, $11.00. Flashed home in an Oakley plate, has to go to another level. Team Godolphin looking for a back-to-back -back, uh, race double here, 13 to 11. Bella Nipotina, well, it's just... An Imperatriz continued to enshrine her legacy. How did the Kiwi gun look in the yard, Jane? Oh, she looked great. Uh, she goes on top from the yard. I was hoping that she'd cope really well with the conditions, and that's exactly what she did. Uh, hard to find any negative with her. She was flawless. She goes. Ripper's handling his preparation brilliantly. He's got such a good attitude. He's not out of it. Bunos Notches has Bay. 250 at the 280 now in Peritriz. Sneaking out to that $3 there, punters, for the favourite. But clearly dominating 50% of the turnover on sports bet books. Here's your favourite. Right, right Locked there. away and racing. And staying there in the stalls with It's Our Time. It's uh, not jumped well at all. It's missed the start about seven or eight lengths. Ruthless Dame began quickly with Bella Nipotina. Imperatriz was away pretty well. They are splitting. There's a group of six going over towards the inside. It's Ruthless Dame from Imperatriz. Skew with Bella Nipotina. Then came Buenos Noches and Sharippa's in that back group as well. Master Faye is going to blend into the side over on the inner. Then came up the outside. It's magic time from the astrologist Cylinder, Benedetta and along gap. It's our time. Heading towards the course proper in the new market. 600 metres to go. Ruthless Dame almost joined by Imperatrice now. Followed by Skewiff. The astrologist down the outside with magic time. Further back Bella Nipotina. Buenos Noches followed by Benedetta and Cylinder. Imperatrice hits the front at the 300 metres with magic time. The astrologist and Cylinder right down the outskirts. And further back in the field Ruthless Dame under pressure. Imperatrice at the clock tower. Magic time. Cylinder the outside. Imperatrice Really has to find Cylinder going with a Cylinder over the top. Cylinder. Cylinder's won the new market by a length. Imperatrice second. Photo third. Benedetta the astrologist. And then Balanipatina. Further back, Magic Time. Sharippa and Ruthless Dame from Buenos Noches. Never really a factor. Well back was Master Faye Skew if and it's our time after blundering at the start. Finished last. There is a racing god. Jamie Carr, 12 months after missing the ride on the eventual winner for James Cummings and Godolphin in, in secret in the new market. The late Dean Hollands took the ride and did such a tremendous job under the pressure. Jamie Carr, 12 months later, is in top form and takes out the 151st new market aboard Cylinder, who becomes the 10th three-year-old Colt or gelding to win the race since 1992. And in the week where Imperatrice Gallant she had the rest of them covered. It's 14-1 and a photo. Feel to win the new market with the extra emotion on top. Uh, I look, <laughs> thought I was a tough person, but so yeah. I'm not today. Um, uh, look, just even the last race was massive for me to get through that and put it behind me. And today, like, <sighs> this is for this is for Dean Holland because yeah, I, I couldn't imagine anyone riding that horse as well as he did last year. And um. I'm not happy I fell, but I'm so happy that that gave him the opportunity to, to win the new market. And oh, yeah, hopefully he's watching down at us today. That's awesome. He was riding that with you, Jack. Oh, I just Dean's obviously watching today because 
oh, I can't believe that happened. Um, obviously, it was a horrible day for me last year, but for Dean to get... And to see um, you know, Lucy Holland and, and Dean Holland's kids on course present the trophy to Jamie Carr was just, just an amazing moment. And I thought transcended, uh, transcended sport. Beautifully put, the pictures to Route 1. New market handicap worth $1.5 million. Let's take Matt Hill's call. Stayed by Benedetta and Cylinder Imperatrice hits the front at the 300 metres with magic time. The astrologist and Cylinder right down the outskirts and further back in the field. Ruthless Dame under pressure. Imperatrice at the clock tower. Magic time. Cylinder the outside. Imperatrice really has to find Cylinder going with a Cylinder over the top. Cylinder. Cylinder's won the new market by a length. Imperatrice second. Photo third. Benedetta. The last the five new markets for James Cummings. All three year olds. All down in the weights, 51 and a half kilos for In Secret last year. 51 and a half, the impost yesterday for Star was at the start, um, Ruthless Stain jumped out and come in front of her. So he's had to come off its heels to come out. The weight is, is another thing, and the EIPH. So she's had three sort of things go against her in that race today, and she still ran second, so outstanding run. Yeah, I thought. Um... Good a job as they've done with the Astrologist, and he got back in the, down in the weights. I think uh, Michael and I disagree a little bit with this point. Is I think it adds merit to Imperatrice's performance that three of the first four home were the three widest runners. It was a beautiful ride from Jamie Carr on Cylinder. Had that perfect trail in behind the astrologist. Got to the best part of the track, lightweight. Well done to James Cummings and Godolphin. They've just had this horse peaking at the right time. I didn't necessarily think he was good enough to do it. Um, time will tell how. I didn't think the three-year-olds were good enough and, and Cylinder hadn't shown that sort of ability, so uh, he's proven me wrong. But, uh, gee, I would have loved to have seen private... And then all of this happens, you know. As soon as I saw Lucy and the kids and Belinda and um, all that there, like, it's, yeah, makes me emotional looking at them. For me, the, the best... I had a few hardened punter mates were saying it seemed like uh, someone had been chopping onions at Flemington because it was bringing a tear to eye and really moving people yesterday. It was... Um, it's just wonderful to see. It's made a little bit more interesting today now an $11 chance, but I think on the back... Holland, outstanding stuff. Let's rip into the CUNY now. This is the mile, second leg of the quaddy, $11 cylinder, the first leg. Ian Coleman looking for a double today. They have two runners in the race, and it's Autumn Angel. That's the popular way. 480 into $4.20 was... Um... Mascari's got the Quinella with the Moody Coleman runners. Jane, who did you like out of the Phillies in the CUNY? Really love the improvement of the six Molly Knickers. I think it was a much better parade from her today. She just showed a few signs that she was in need of her first up run. She's the mile here, Grinzinger Bell. Well, you know, she was terrific winning first up. She brings the Skybird form when she ran second to her. Over the mile at Group 2 level at the Valley. So she was very popular with the pros who were betting late here on oh leaks. They stand for now, racing, and mislead broke well towards the inside. It's one of the initial leaders with Sarah Sana. Sassy Boom is showing some speed from the deep and is going to cross the face of the field to lead the race. So glamorous Grinzinger, Bell on the improve, then Molly Nickers. French Endeavour midfield outside of Autumn Angel, followed by Vieste, Pink Shandon, Basilina, well back in the field, Ethel Maud, and into you as last at the 1,200 metres. Sassy Boom took it up, and so glamorous is going to sit second the outside. I a half away, Sarah Sana mislead, and then came Grinzinger Bell, who's still trying to find a position. Molly Nickers, a length and a half off her, and then came Autumn Angel, French Endeavour, a length and a quarter, Basilina, followed by Vieste, Pink Shand on into you, and Ethel Maud is last. Sassy Boom through halfway at the 800 metres, led by about two or three lengths here, wants it over and done with. From So Glamorous, and they were followed by Sarah Sana mislead, a length and a quarter, Grinzinger Bell, who slotted in, fifth on the outside of Molly Nickers from French. Endeavour, Autumn Angel is back along the inside, eight or nine off the lead from Vieste, Pink Shandon, well back Basilina into you and Ethel Maud, Sassy Boom held together, first to straighten, 450 out, had a decent buffer from Sarasana, so glamorous, Grinzinger Bell, French Endeavour to the outside with Autumn Angel running on, and behind those Molly Nickers and also Basilina, Autumn Angel at the 250 took the front from French Endeavour a length away, here's Basilina on the outside running on with Molly Nickers, Autumn Autumn Angel, 100 metres to go. Basilina and Molly Nickers coming in the centre. Basilina up to Autumn Angel, who found an Autumn Angel. Responds and won by a neck, Basilina and Molly Nickers. A gap French endeavour in a photo with Into You, followed by Miss Lee Grinzinger Bell. Behind them, Sarasana Pink Shan.
Autumn Angel with Mark Zara hard at it gets it done in the Group 2 CUNY and that'll sit very nicely alongside her ethereal win at 2,000 metres in the spring. We thought we might have seen her. Autumn Angel and Molly Nickers to the race. They'd had their respective lead-ups through the, the Vanity and the Armanasco, respectively. Things perhaps weren't on Autumn Angel's terms at Caulfield, given just the shape of the race and the day. Mark Zara again finding a way to present her at the right time, Cuz. Yeah, he was, Cuz. You, you listened to Peter Moody on the race on the radio yesterday. He said both girls are even in the race. I can't split them. He said if they both jump, because they usually don't jump, it will take the ride to win the race. Mark Zara, his ride, amazing. What's the viewpoint on this line of form? And there's Again, I guess, aspirations to head to Sydney for races like a Vinery. Wiley Dalziel seemed to think that's the pathway for Autumn Angel coming and are they going to take a two-prong odds, so to speak? There's some options. Um, you could go to a Vinery, Amy, I think, with both of them. Even Basilina could head to a, a Vinery as well. They all look like 2,000 metres, particularly Autumn Angel and Basilina are maybe even going to be even better suited at 2,000. Yeah, so she's been really heavily fancied, especially after those sentiments from James Cummings. She's at $5 at this stage. Two down Lizzie, 250 out to 290. Erno's Cube has been supported too, 440 into 360. Extreme Diva solid there at about seven. And they're racing. She's jumped out OK, two down Lizzie, and showing very good acceleration. Uh, She's looking for the lead and getting it from Nymphador up on the outside. Silmarillion lands a good spot on the outside of Extreme Diva. Mike drops firing up in the second half of the field. Reasonable point the fence. Erno's cube in a three-wide spot. Miss Bustling of being restrained last of all. So two down Lizzie shows the way from Nymphador at the 800. Extreme Diva third on the inside of Silmarillion. Further back to Reasonable Point. Mike drops proving to be a real handful. Erno's cube one off the fence now on the outside of Miss Bustlinger. 600 to go. Two down Lizzie. She wants to go faster. A half in front to Nymphadora. Then Extreme Diva travelling well on the inside of Silmarillion. Further back to Reasonable Point. Mike drop. Erno's cube pulling wide second last as they come up the rise. Two down Lizzie. Really being tested now by Nymphadora and Silmarillion's chiming in nicely. Further back to Mike drop. Erno's cube. Extreme Diva needs to pick up. Silmarillion takes a narrow lead at the 200. Silmarillion ahead in front. Erno's cube's thundering home. Two down Lizzie's fighting back dogged. It's Silmarillion, Erno's Cube, Erno's Cube got there, Erno's Cube narrowly from Silmarillion and two down Lizzie showed lots of fight on the inside third. A gap back to Miss Bustlinger from Mike. Races we talked about, Magic Millions behind Stormboy, Silver Slipper behind Straight Charge and Espionage and today just gets the bob, just too strong late. Yeah, just too strong late and has been so tough as you mentioned, gone through all those early lead up races as well. I mean, when you think of how busy she's been. The races that I've been most looking forward to across the whole program and one of our best backed runners across the card comes up in this race but it's not our favourite straight charge. He's at 270 out from 260 now. It is Switzerland with 40% of the hold as I said. One of the best backed runners across the program. 360 he went up 390 and he's been hovering around that price but best backed in this race. Espionage at 420 in from 4. Here we go. The Tobman. What will it tell us from a golden slipper point of view. Racing straight charge left or right off the inside. Pretty level line out. Shangri-La Express there, but now straight charge musters and holds out Shangri-La Express and bodyguard goes forward in the gold cap. They're followed further back then by all-inclusive Switzerland and getting right up the inside is Espionage. Espionage is railing through from get a fix and bodyguard. They settle into stride. Straight charge can't get a breather here. The Queensland filly rushes forward on the outside. All-inclusive went up to Har Ras the favourite straight charge for Lander took a sit in third. Then Shangri-La Express from Switzerland. Espionage on the rails from Get a Fix and Bodyguard is last of all. Straight charge comes around the turn from All Inclusive. Straight charge and neck in front to All Inclusive. Then came Valanda. Shangri-La Express. Switzerland gets going. Get a fix down the outside. Espionage is in a horrible traffic jam trying to bulldoze through. Straight charge races two lengths clear. Switzerland giving chase. Bodyguards running on. Straight charge at the 150 straight charge a length by a length but now Switzerland's digging in Switzerland going home hard and Switzerland will win the Todman Switzerland by a length to straight charge Shangri-La Express third bodyguard fourth espionage with traffic issues in the straight a gap to Verlander get a fix and all inclusive
Well, we know that uh, Coolmore are going to have the two favourites for the Golden Slipper, and Lizzie Watt gets so fascinating. Now, he was perfect today. J-Mac gets the job done. So J-Mac rides Stormboy last week. He rides Switzerland today. Ryan Moore, we know, is nearly certain to come out. Turns over the two gay and Adrian horses. They run well. So what happens now is so intriguing. It is so intriguing, but what I suppose we're looking forward to seeing is or hearing from is James McDonald on his assessment of Stormboy last week and now Switzerland today. You know, Bruce, I think that Bruce's private eye, he has about 50% of the hold at this stage and they're keeping him very safe at the top of the market. And interestingly, the market can't work out who should be second favourite at this stage. They're fighting it out to a certain extent of really even split of money outside of private eye, as I said, with 50% of that hold. Remark is... Stand by for the challenge stakes. Racing now. Private Eye left the gates well together with How the Serenity. Zapata on the white cap going forward. Then Marzu. Remark hasn't got a great deal of speed. Passive aggressive. Half cap and settled back last. Now Private Eye's taken back to sit last with it. Zapata takes the front. Out by two lengths on Marzu. How's the Serenity? Remark is using the rails to improve its position. Half cabin right behind coming one off. Then passive aggressive. And Private Eye being ridden stone cold last of all. Zapata on the bend led the way from Marzu. How's the Serenity? Then came Remark from half cabin between runners. Further back to Passive aggressive. Private Eye still last with 300 metres to run. Zapateo being joined by Marzu. Marzu going after Zapateo. Passive aggressive letting down. And then came Remark on the rails. Passive aggressive went up to join Zapateo. Passive aggressive just in front from Zapateo. Half cabin late. Passive aggressive won the challenge stakes. Beat Zapateo on the fast finishing half cabin. Then Remark from Marzu. Private Eye couldn't accelerate today. And how's the serenity was last to finish? So lightning strikes, a passive-aggressive. So went off to be a broodmare in May. They retired, couldn't get into foal. So decision made, let's come back and go again. We know the owner, of course, such a big, big player in Australian racing. What a training performance by Graham Begg. Yeah, unbelievable to see her come back to her very best. And we're also used to seeing her be a little bit more forward in the running. It was a very different race. It changed complexion of speed at the top of the straight was absolutely breathtaking. She just really clicked into gear. Great for Jordan Char. Happened to have a couple of beers post the races yesterday and Graham Begg was in my vicinity with his nearest and dearest watching this race and I had a quick chat to him afterwards. She's missed three times. In, didn't get in foal. Been to stud. They bring her back to the races and she wins the challenge, taking down some of our best sprinters. As a trainer, wow, what a, what an effort to bring her back and get her to do this. That's an unbelievable training performance. Graham's, um, you know, he's a very, very skilled horseman and does a wonderful job with his team and she was really gutsy then and isn't it funny on a... ..so well known. Last year's Canterbury Stakes was a thrill... Think about it is our lay of the day, my favourite time of the day. He has 65% of the hold and he's getting out in the market, but that is because we are doing that. So he's out to 2.30 just to dangle the carrot for the punters there. $1.95 out to 2.30. Espiona has been very well supported actually since... Hey, stand by. There's the light for the Group 1 Canterbury Stakes. Ready to run. Racing, Espiano were flopped out of the gates last. Malkovich began very fast, as did Cold Crusher on the outside. Malkovich leads a half to Cold Crusher. Bandersnatch goes to third from Pericles. Lady Laguna, think about it. Espiano down on the fence, last of all. Malkovich at a controlled speed at the 1,000. Only a half length in front of Cole Crusher, who's getting closer on the outside. Three off to Bandersnatch on the outside of Pericles. Then came Lady Laguna. And the two favourites back last. Espiano on the inside, I think about it. So it's Malkovich just in front of Cole Crusher. Only a head between them at the 700. Still two or three lengths away to uh, Bandersnatch. Snatcher. Now think about it. Clipperton puts him into the race. Think about it. Goes to a clear third. Espiona still sits back last. Malkovich leads around the turn. Cole Crusher revved up. Think about it. Third. Followed by Pericles. Lady Laguna getting to the outside. Now Espiona. She's three behind. Think about it. At the 300. Malkovich trying to cling on. It's Malkovich from Cole Crusher. Think about it. Lady Laguna and Espiona with the last shot at them. Lady Laguna hits the lead. Lady Laguna got a length in front of. Think about it. 
Bandit and Aspiona, and Lady Laguna causes an upset in the Canterbury Stakes. Lady Laguna by a length and a half. Photo second, think about it, and Aspiona. Pericles fourth in front of Cole Crusher, then Bandersnatch and Malkovich. What a training triumph for Annabelle Nisham, who I think's had a, a little... She's an absolute iron mare. What an absolutely unbelievable run from her. We've seen her go forward. When we were talking during the run, I thought she would be a lot more positive, but I said to absorb that pressure. So they rode her quietly on a hot speed, and the turn of foot that she possessed, she's beaten two group one. He was too keen, and Sam had to put him into the race. He has got second there. Espion, look at her head carriage. I'm convinced mm. she's better than Melbourne way of going. She would have been so competitive for mine in a new market. Congratulations. We'd be heading towards a TJ and the epitome of the mayor in form is Lady Laguna from winning the Magic Millions Phillies and Mares on the Gold Coast, won the Southern Cross, second in the Millie Foxes who got her at the start prior and able to take down some of our best when you think, think about it. The Everest winner and Espiona again, they diverted course from going to the new market to... This race yesterday, she missed the start, able to run on into third place, and it was a good go on the line with Think About It. But Lady Laguna was getting beaten in races in Melbourne in sort of three-year-old Phillies company during the Festival of Racing 12 months ago. Great effort from Annabelle Nisham to bring her through and nice effort from Tyler Schiller as well. Isn't it wonderful to see... Katie McDonald there taking us through the history of what was the Canterbury Guineas and now the Randwick Guineas. So there's the trophy with the million dollars to go with it. And the all-important group one. So He's all the rage here. He has over 60% of the hold. So the punters have marked him as our short price even favourite there at 2.15, almost evens in from 2.30. Celestial Legend has stayed rock solid on the second line, four into 3.70, along with Tom Kitten. He's been really well supported there at the 6.50 quote. NCAP easing a touch, nine out to 12. Le Vampers are more the rest of them and nothing really else to support there. But military... Militarise a short favourite. Racing now. Ducasse left the gate well. So did Le Vampir towards the inside. And Le Vampir is going to lead. Gambare going forward together with Fukubana. And then came Chea Wolf plonked down on the rails. Militarise settles in fifth. Then came Ducasse from Tom Kidd and N. Cap and Celestial Legends caught wide in the early part. And a gap back in the field to Cosmic Latin Cafe Millennium. So Le Vampir shows the way narrowly from the stablemate Gambare. Fukubana over racing in third. Then Chao Wolf together with Ducasse. A length and a half to militarise. Celestial Legend's gone forward now and has got himself in front of Tom Kitten in the run. End caps buried down on the fence. Cafe Millennium second last one off. And the roughy of the field, Cosmic Lad, sees them all. Inside the 800 metres, Fukubana's travelling keen. So given more now and Fukubana took the lead away from Le Vampir and Gambare. A gap further back to Du Castan, Chao Wolf, Celestial Legend, just a fraction deep there on the outside of the favourite Militarise. Then Cafe Millennium, Tom Kitten is well back on the inside of NCAP as they come around the turn. Fukubana shows the way by a length and a half to Gambare. Then came Le Vampir. Now Militarise goes. Celestial Legend goes from Cafe Millennium and Tom Kitten's cluttered up. Celestial Legend raced up to join Militarise on the outside, Cafe Millennium Tom Kitten looking for room, saves in cap, it's Celestial Legend Celestial Legend with the head in front Celestial Legend kicking, Cafe Millennium lunges, Miss Celestial Legend what a brave win in the round with Guineas, won it from either Militarise or Cafe Millennium then Ducas Gambare Tom Kitten in cap, Chao Wolf, Le Vampir uh, Cosmic Lad, last to finish was Fukubana is Everest as well, and Les Bridge gets another Group 1 to go with the Everest. He's 12th for Les, he's 85. He hasn't had a Group 1 for a long time, since Hot Danish won the Dooman 10,000 14 years ago. How good is this? An 85-year-old putting the polish on this horse, oh. who we seem to know so well. This is spectacular. What a race, what a run, what a result. What a finish. Three horses across the track. I, you could just see that Militarise was giving his absolute all, but Celestial Legend was just really fighting, and he wanted it just that little bit more. Cafe Millennium put up a massive performance under Tom Marquand, but what a run. You can see that they were... Knee and so often it's the Hobartville that provides the winner of this race, and it was the case yesterday with... Celestial legend getting it done, Kieran McAvoy for Lesbridge. 
at the age of 85, 48 years after he won his first Group 1. Of course, he won a Golden Slipper with Sadapa 41 years ago in the autumn. His 12th Group 1 here with Celestial Legend, who in a driving finish had the better of militarised, who was coming off, of course, the placing to Fangirl first up on the Apollo, the giant Cafe Millennium galloping on into third. Uh, how does the outcome of one of the important three-year-old races of Sydney's autumn, what's the knock-on effect for a few of the other markets? Well, we see the Quinella very hard to beat again for the Rose Hill Guineas and a horse that you didn't mention there in the blue that could have topped a red, could have topped a red letter day for the Godolphin team. Tom was pretty unlucky and hopefully he gets to bounce back if you want to stick with Tom Kitten because he should have gone very close to winning. He's a $5 second elect with Celestial Legend. Militarise 350 out to 420, so still favourite going forward. 400. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to do it. The map has been off the map to get the job done in today's feature, the Adelaide Cup. Clearly the best back galloper and dominates the market now at $3.20. Has been a firmer throughout the course of the week and was 3.80 when final field was posted. Got into as short as 2.70 this morning. Acceleration heavily back last time out when getting the job down in beautiful Launceston and has been supported again here, 6.50 into 3.60. Yellow brick. $4.20 late in betting. The map is going to jump favourite at three ninety. Yellow Brick Road, sick. Scanning the field. He's happy. And they're off. And a maid. Well, he missed it. Probably four, maybe five. So he's not the best away. But we know that was probably going to be the case. One last kiss. And also acceleration gets snagged out. There's plenty of speed on up front. Yellow Brick Road, Oceanic Flash, Alambra Lads carving over. So too is Grand Piero, Rapino not far away. Sanderstan caught out a fraction deep at the moment. Through inside of the map there when she left the fence and has pinched ground. A mate is towards the back of the field and there looks to be some problem here for the jockey. There is Zach Spain, he's lost his irons. So uh, we've got a problem here with uh, a maid. Zach Spain has got no irons and he's just sitting in the field. It's like he was back in 1864. Fourth, Skelm is fifth. Then Grand Piero, eight on the dot. The map is one off on the outside. She's almost obscured by the lime colours of one last kiss. Then a maid in the white cap with Zach Spain bobbing in the saddle. Rapino and then Tulligan. Port Guillaume, acceleration, and towards the back of the last two, Lincoln King and Roaring Engine. Heading to the side of the track, they've gone in halfway, a thousand to run. And the leader, Alambra Lad, by three quarters. Sander Stan ready to strike. Yellow Brick Road has moved to third. Oceanic Flash, then eight on the dot, Skelm. Followed by Grand Piero. Now the map, Jamie Carr's just holding her cards at the moment. She's yet to peel, but she's going to come deep. One last kiss, then Port Guillaume. A maid still going along, but he's in all sorts of trouble here. Then acceleration sneaking through as they race up towards the 600 where Sanderstan gets in the face now of a Lambra lad. Yellow Brick Road, eight on the dot, Skelm. Here's the map joining in at the right time. A maid's come off the fence. This would be remarkable if he's in the finish. They sweep up to the home bend. Sanderstan turned in front with a Lambra lad. The map quickly joins them. Accelerations charge through on the rail. Then a maid. The map goes to the lead at the 250. Accelerations hunting her down. Acceleration after the map. Then a maid and Skilm. Acceleration drives through underneath the map. Acceleration on the map. A grandstand finish to the Adelaide Cup. Or oh, maybe acceleration. A whisker to the map but there's nothing in it. Acceleration or the map. Third place Skilm. What a remarkable run by a maid to finish fourth. Roaring engine. Finish and what a ride. Harry Coffey and Jamie Carr pair off to fight out. Stride for stride the last furlong, John. The map, the outside, acceleration, the inside. And the inside, the Victorian just sticks his neck out and wins by the barest of margins. Two great rides and what a great battle over the last 100 metres. Harry Coffey, that is one of the rides of the year. Acceleration was bolting from the 800 metre mark. He kept picking runs inside horses. He hasn't gone round a horse. He's won the race by about half a head. The maps had every chance for Jamie. The maps had every chance for Jamie Carr. She always had it in the right spot. She probably had a length of metre mark. And what a run from a maid. The horse has finished fourth. Zach Spade has had no irons for basically 2,400 metres. And he loomed up like he was going to run past them too at the 400, John did a maid. That was an incredible piece of horsemanship from Zach Spain. We'll catch up with him, but...
Yes, yeah, all about the reigning champ from last year, Mr. Brightside, $1.75. He's short, and Australia's on him to win a back to back uh, All Star Miles here. He's drawn a little bit tricky, All Star Miles here. He's drawn a little bit tricky. Craig uh, Williams will have to give him the gun so he doesn't let Pride of Jenny next to Lex in the market too far away in front. Out to $4.20. She's soft late, Cascadian. He was. Here comes the defending champ, Mr. Brightside. Fourth in the race in 2022. He's won the awe and the futurity to make it six Group 1s in his career to date in the lead-up to this said. It's hard to find a better horse in Australia than Mr Brightside, and he's getting to his preferred distance. He's had six starts here at Caulfield for five victories. He's defeated all of the key... ...in the awe to Mr Brightside first up. Yeah, she's just got better and better as she's got older, and her, the back end of her last preparation was outstanding, obviously winning two Group 1s at Flemington. She was only narrowly denied by Mr Brightside first up, and you'd like to think she's got... Bugatsu and Zaki. Jane, your pick of the yard for the All-Star Mile. Well, I think Mr Brightside would have had to do something uh, out of the ordinary for me not to have stuck with him here today. I know he's very short. I think it was better than last start, and that's just the horse. He thrives with racing. He gets better with every... Uh... ...mile, that is for sure. Craig Williams in the saddle. Good luck, punters, as we have a look down the market here with Sportsbet. Pride of Jenny, she's holding around her opening quote. She opened up at 390, and there she is, rock solid at 390. Cascadian, well, he did trim up uh, Star Mile, in. the richest mile race on turf. All Star Mile 6 about to get underway. And they're racing. And Puncher anticipated the start and got a flyer early, the Kiwi, with a tractable the inside. Pride of Jenny is pushing up. Ayrton isn't too far away. And where's Buffalo River at this stage? About seventh and looking to force forward. Pride of Jenny using plenty of the track. A tractable lead with 1,200 metres to go, but Pride of Jenny is going to take over and lead. Buffalo River, as it usually does, is surging up. And Desert Lightning's going to get the 1-1 one, one in fourth place. A length and a half, Holy Mans and Puntura. They were followed by midfield. Dom to shoot three wide around Ayrton Pinstriped. A length, Mr. Brightside, who's third last. Dragged back from gate 11. Two and a half lengths, Munamek and Cascadian last. Pride of Jenny, they've run it hard. 850 metres to go by two lengths to Buffalo River. A brutal tempo. Three further back, attractable. A length and a quarter, Desert Lightning. Lightning niggled at. They were followed by Holy Man's Puntura. Then came Dom to shoot, pinstriped Ayrton. Mr. Brightside would be at least 15 off the lead, maybe 20. Two further back in the field, Mudamek and Cascadian. So it's Pride of Jenny coming up towards the corner at the 400 metres. Two lengths in front. From in second place, Buffalo River in its slipstream. Four lengths away, Holy Man's. And then came attractable pinstripe. Mr. Brightside brought to the outside. Seven or eight off Pride of Jenny. Who who still paddles in front, but we know she go keeps going at the 200. Pride of Jenny, three legs Buffalo River. Now Mr. Brightside and Cascadian coming, but it's still Pride of Jenny. 100 to go. There's no stopping her. What a performance. Pride of Jenny wins by two legs Mr. Brightside, Cascadian. She has run them into the ground. They were followed by Buffalo River Ayrton, Dom to shoot Holy Man's Desert Lightning, pinstriped. Munamek attractable and Puntura has finished last of all. There's no catching her. Pride of Jenny wins the sixth edition of the All-Star Mile. Tears for the owner ambassador who's been part of the Pride of Jenny story for 48 hours and will walk away $100,000 richer. And Kieran Ma, the latest trophy to head towards his burgeoning cabinet is the All-Star Mile. 12, 1, 2 and 6, the cream rose, as we anticipated it might, given the composition of this year's race. Pride of Jenny, the Empire, the champion, 1,600 metres. Mr Brightside Gallant, he had an enormous task to try and go back-to-back. -back. He runs on into second. He'll be on song for the Australian Cup. And Cascadian flies once again. He might have another duel to defend his title in the Australian Cup in a couple of... 135-22 they've run in the All-Star Mile, so they're just a second outside Fields of Omar's track record, but it was searing as expected, and Pride of Jenny stands tallest. 12 one it's Pride of Jenny. Even at the moment, uh, Michael, but great ride from Declan Bates. He had a game plan, he took it in A long way. She's probably needed all of her six years uh, to mature as a racehorse. I think both mentally and physically she was doing a lot of things wrong in the early days and she's... The watch was Mr Brightside from 11 of 12 and where Craig Williams would get to. Given the composition of the race, we knew Pride of Jenny and a number of other runners were going to go forward and 
didn't they put the speed on? And it was willing, Elliot. Yeah, the speed was on. As, as expected, we all knew that was going to happen and Craig had a decision to make early and, um, like, he slotted in. But, you know, the barriers did play a big part. Um, it made it forced him to make a decision and um, he, he sort of backed himself upon that and already... Pride of Jenny coming up towards the corner at the 400 metres. Two links in front from in second place, Buffalo River in its slipstream. Four links away, Holy Mans, and then came a tractable pinstripe. Mr Brightside brought to the outside. Seven or eight off Pride of Jenny, who still paddles in front, but we know she go keeps going at the 200. Pride of Jenny, three links, Buffalo River. Now Mr Brightside and Cascadian coming, but it's still Pride of Jenny. A hundred to go. There's no stopping her. What a performance. Pride of Jenny wins by two leagues, Mr Brightside. Yet another Cascadia. captivating front-running effort from Pride of Jenny. She wins the sixth all-star mile. She becomes, in particular, your views on Craig Williams' ride. Yeah, look, Craig was a bit dictated by the barrier, I felt. He drew one from the outside. The two horses inside him that went forward, um, if he was to push forward as well, I would have thought he probably was going to be three deep with no cover. If that's the way they wanted him ridden, well, that's probably where he's going to end up because the two horses inside him, um, the Desert Horse from New Zealand and Buffalo River, and ended out um, outside the leader and won one. So Craig was outside them. It's most likely he was going to be caught there. He saw an opportunity to duck in early. Um, I've no, no doubt if he had drawn better, he would have liked to have been a length or two closer in the run to obviously prior to Jenny, but he was a bit dictated to by the gate. And, um, you know, you could see he moved out three wide to get on the back of Dom to shoot. Um, but just as you saw going up to the first... I think it's really important to be clear that the instructions to Craig Williams were to be positive and to push forward. They didn't mind if he was sitting three wide without cover. But as a jockey, you have to make a decision in a race. Having watched this and in hindsight, what would have you done in that situation? Yeah, I was comfortable with Craig's the way he did it. I probably would have done the same. Um, you know, look, if they wanted him to be three deep with no cover... That's the question. Would he have finished off as well as he did? Um, you never know that. Never know that. Um, we'll never know that. Yeah. Um, but I, I think, from a jockey's perspective, I think Craig did the right thing. And my other question: with, Like a horse that can maintain a speed, and like she's got such a high cruising speed, uh, they're incredible to watch, and they're very hard to run past. And it's, it was almost what was mathematically yeah. impossible from where Mr Brightside was in the running to pick her up. And the fact that he's run six lengths faster than her for his last 600 just goes to show that you know he hasn't run a bad race. No. He has, you know, I don't think you can and he's not lose too many admirers no. in that performance. Oh, definitely not. He was fantastic, but. And the good thing with him, given that hopefully the first three from yesterday are going to go from the All-Star Mile and find themselves in an Australian Cup in a fortnight's time. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's mouth-watering, really, isn't it, uh, overall? And um, Brightside and Cascade and genuine Group 1 horses. Ollie, we've seen the, the format of the All-Star Mile every year stack up strongly. In fact, the Donnies, I think... Have... Doncaster trifecta the last two years. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, it will be again. Yeah, it's look, it's a strong race, no doubt. I mean, we probably... Here, if you're keen on Fly Fly, I certainly wouldn't talk you out based on the market. Castagna at $3.70. Now, I'll give you the thoughts on our traders here. Yeah, is the different form line. And I do want to touch on She Smashes as well. So $51 the open. We're talking $35-odd. The slipper and the fillies... <laughs> Are off now, Castagna missed the kick. Drifting jump really well from the wide gate. There's plenty booting through though. Shadow Miraval, Vala Bing the inside and Southern Charm three out. Vala Bing's really hunting through on the fence, hard to try and keep drifting out. Then it's a baby on the inside of Fly Fly, settles midfield. Couple off to Castagna from She Smashes. And three lengths away to Totoka. So Vala Bing wasn't giving up the fence. And in the process, it fired itself up. But is a narrow leader from drifting. Shadow Miraval ridden with cover today in third. Then it's a baby Southern Charm. Further back to Castagna from Fly Fly. Just got back another length. And she smashes Totoka of the last two. 500 out. Vala Bing and drifting. Now Shadow Miraval's coming off heels three wide. It's a baby pinching ground on the fence. Further back to Southern Charm. Fly Fly to the outside. Castagna's coming down the middle part of the track. Looking to slice through his drifting races to the lead by a length on Shadow Miraval. And here's Fly Fly cutting loose. Castagna goes to fourth between runners. Fly Fly sustaining the run. Moved up to drifting and Shadow Miraval over on the inside. Drifting from Fly Fly. Drifting going well on the inside. Drifting kicking hard and drifting beat Fly Fly. Shadow Miraval ahead away third and close up Castagna fourth.
A gap to she smashes doing its best work late and a good margin back to Totokas. Well, Peter Snowden won this race a long time ago, back in 2008. We know how brilliant the Snowdens are with their two-year-olds. And this filly, there'll be some sort of a gear change from the master trainer, that is uh, John Hawkes. She just has her head slightly on the side and just... So Gatsby's is our favourite. We know that at even money and easily the best backed. Five times more than the next best backed runner in the race. 26 into $21, interestingly enough, in the slipper today. So some thinking $2 is too short, but I'll have a go for the slipper. Coleman at five... Ready to go. And they're racing. A node began brilliantly wide out. And handle bars down. A node's looking for the lead from the wide draw. Coming across the field. Gatsby's there with Dublin down. Johnny the Kid wide out. The 300 handy on the rails. Followed then by Coleman. On the outside of King of Rousseau. A gap to agenda set of parkour. Well back then is... Uh, well back glorious moments. And Duvana going into the first turn. And Dublin down. Got to up on the inside there. And held out a node for the lead. Dublin down from a node. Johnny the Kid out wide, followed by the 300, and Gatsby's is wedged between runners in fifth as they come to the turn. King of Rousseau getting close to heels on the inside of Coleman, and two further back to Agenda Setter. Dublin down comes to the bend in front by a length, a node under pressure. They're followed by the 300. Gatsby's into the clear from Johnny the Kid. King of Rousseau's got it all to do. Inside the 300 metres, Dublin down the leader, going well from a node. Gatsby's grinding away in third. He needs to lift. It's Dublin down in front of the 150. A length on a note sticking to the task. But Dublin down going great guns. Dublin down is going to gate crush the golden slipper. Dublin down held off a node and Coleman got up to run third. Gatsby's not so great in fourth. Then came King of Rousseau. Further back to parkour from Johnny the Kid, the 300. A gap to Devana, a gender setter. At last to finish was glorious moments. Good line though, Darren. Even if he finished fourth, you'd collected that oh so well. Well, boy, oh boy, if the previous winner made not a big effect on the market for the Golden Slipper, you feel like this bloke's not going to as well. He must have been at least 200 to 1. 3 4. And probably the best out of the rest of the field. And Coleman, well, I think it's a good move sending him up here. He's going to come on leaps and bounds from that last up. And this is a. Interesting golden slipper, as much for the jockeying for jockeys with Storm Boy sending in Cornwall's number one man, Ryan Moore. James McDonald goes on Switzerland. Yeah, so Storm Boy 230, Switzerland 480, straight charge an $8 chance, read the top three in the market and try and... This might be just a bridge too far for noise. Um, favourite here, Le Vampire, is popular around the $3.80 mark and Macarena just on the drifted touch. So they've met in the middle at the moment, but we'll see in the final couple of minutes. Salt Coats at $4.60, Kintai $7 is the one I wanted to touch on. Second best backed runner in the rain, dollars the open now, 7 Zardozzi $10, looking for further undoubtedly. Raff Attack at $12. And for the Shandon, the far lap stakes to commence today. Yeah. Racing. There's a great line out. Le Vampire began sharply. Macarena nicely into stride. And now Coover showing plenty of muster. Followed then by Raff Attack, who's slowly rolling forward the outside. Soul coach the fence. Kintai between them. Further back to He Man and the White Cap from Noisy Boy. Two off to Zardozzi Ravello. And Tan House is going to settle last of all. Le Vampire's trying to get down to the fence. Our Coover's proving to be a bit of a pest on the inside. It did enough there to force Hippo's hand on Le Vampire. He had to work and he accepted. Accelerates to the lead and Raff attack the stable mate gets two off then to Kintyre on the outside of He-Man further back to Zardozzi, Noisy Boy, Tannhauser and Ravello is the last one. Le Vampire a narrow leader from Raff attack the now Coover, Macarena, two links to Soul Coates from He-Man uh, Kintyre still back in the field on the outside or behind Zardozzi they turn Le Vampire's been heavily back to win the Ajax stakes and it kicks gets two links clear. Uh, Raff attack dropped off. Macarena's giving chase now. Zardozzi goes back on the inside. Le Vampire's all out now. Moving up on the outside. Macarena, Zardozzi and Kintai with the last shot of them as Zardozzi takes the lead. Zardozzi beat off Macarena and Kintai and Zardozzi draws clear with the far lap stakes. Zardozzi two lengths. Macarena second ahead away third. Kintai. Maybe Le Vampire hanging on for four from Tan Hauser, He Man, and then came Noisy Boy. Further back to our Coover, followed by Salt Coach, Ravello, and Raff Attack Weekend right out to finish last.
What a great training performance by James Cummings. A little, little underwhelming first up. Won the Oaks in the spring after winning the Edward Manifold and running well in the Wakeful. Now stakes her claim to be a serious contender to do an Oaks double. She's got orchestral property standing in a way. He rode well, didn't he, Aussie Tom? He did. He got the very best out of her. But I think it has to go down to this training performance from James Cummings and obviously the horse as well. The amount of improvement. Route one, after she won the light fingers, I'd say she can measure up. And here's our first look at Zagotcha, Lizzie. Well, she was just terrific last start. I had a little bit of doubt on how she was going to return, but in the Millie Fox, she was excellent. And I just think... Jay they've found one and they've just decided this is it. We're home and hose. Just pay us out. Let us know when the race is over. Zugotcha, they have launched in. So there's 10 times more on Zugotcha than Tropical Squall. There's 10 times more on Zugotcha than Kamachi. The second best backed runner in the race. Well, that's Vienna Princess and then Jenny Lala. Those two at $12 at the moment. But they are a long way behind. Zugotcha, who occupies about business, is at that top end. Uh, Jenny Lala and Vienna Princess, the only two at any sort of price that have been. Tropical Squall. The light is on, uh, the Coolmore Classic field are ready to go. Zoo gotcha, barrier two, the heavily back favourite. Starter about to release the field and does so now. They're off and racing, Tropical Squall clearly best out from the outside draw and she looks like making the running here from Revolutionary Miss and Jenny Lala pushing forward as Tropical Squall crosses down to the rails. They're followed by Denied Knowledge, Kamachi out deep, then Zoo Gotcha settling sixth. In advance of Samana in the orange cap, further back to Yonsei in the early stages from Hinge. Then came Barbie's Doll on the outside of Renaissance Woman, then followed by Hell Hath No Fury, Vienna Princess. More secrets back on the rails from Barbie's Fox, third last. Then Madame Pomery and Foxy Frieda's last of all. Tropical Squad led. Revolutionary Miss goes to second at the 800 metres. Jenny Lala with a sit on the inside of Denied Knowledge and Kamachi caught deeper out. They're followed by Zoo Gotcha, plonked down on the rails on the inside of Samana and hinged on a three-wide path with cover. Two lengths further back to Yonsei on the rails from Renaissance Woman. Barbie's doll hard at it out wide. Further back to Vienna Princess. More secrets as they straighten up now. And Tropical Squall looking for another Group 1 success. Revved up. Tropical Squall at the 300 from Revolutionary Miss. Who gotcha's out now. Closing off. Then came Kamachi. Samana winding up on the outside. Tropical Squall shows the way from Zoo Gotcha. Wide out is Samana running home hard and Samana moved up with Zoo Gotcha. They're wide apart. Zoo Gotcha near the inside of Samana. Zoo Gotcha. Zoo Gotcha got the Coolmore. Zoo Gotcha went at a neck to Samana and close up hinged and also Kamachi. Then Tropical Squall Jenny Lala. Further back Renaissance Woman from Yonsei. Foxy Frieda. Revolutionary Miss. Then more secrets. Hell hath no fury. Deny knowledge. Vienna Princess. Barbie's Fox. Madame Pomery. Zoo Gotcha. Yeah, Zagotcha, Noel Greenoff and their team and those colours. James McDonald wins a first Cornwall Classic, gets to 90 Group 1 winners, 90 Group 1 winners and winners, and Chris Waller, 157. He hadn't won once, headed, no doubt, by Samana for a bit of the straight. She was so strong under a big weight late. Oh, she was brilliant, wasn't she? I've never seen her look as good as she possibly looked today. And that was just a, a great ride, a great performance from a mare who is in terrific form. Spare and he just, and what he's been able to do is get over the heels of those in front, but never lose momentum. He's just exquisite to watch. He's just a jockey of our generation that'll go down as an absolute great. He'll go down as a legend of uh, Australasian racing. Yeah, no doubt about that. Sick and Zoo gotcha in a number of ways, emulating the deeds of Sunline in this race from 22 years ago, and it remains to be seen whether that path will now take Zoo gotcha towards the Group 1 Doncaster in a couple of weeks' time. The handicapper will perhaps be the determining factor there. Group 1, 90 for James McDonald. Group 1, 157 for Chris Waller. 33 of them together. What a remarkable combination they are, but it almost was brought undone by Samana just minutes after Pride of Jenny's win in the All-Star Mile. Kieran Ma took several combatants to the Coolmore yesterday and Samana was almost able to have the better of him. And Zoo Gotcha was well-backed. And it's refreshing for me to be able to sit here and say the well-backed favourite got the job done in the Group 1 because they have been 
Forum was 10 late in betting. Now an $11 chance to go on and win the Doncaster. And you'd have to think the way Zoo Gotcha races is tactically versatile, looks a progressive star and could potentially go on and be one of the main chances in the Doncaster. Well, I think the stable have also come out and openly said that they're training her very different this time round. I think last season she contested. It is the third best backed runner in the race, not stupidly quiet. But there is a lot of support for Democracy Manifest is the best backed runner. And the second best backed at the moment is Detonated Jack. And you can see both of them have trimmed in a couple of points. Glory Duck as well. No one says well wall with as much enthusiasm as Jace. I'll just leave. Ready to go. They're off and racing now. And flopping out the back was Territory Express. And more victorious began sharply. So did Robusto. Palmetto settles in third as fierce and starting to muster after a fair start. They're followed by Detonator Jack Handy on the inside of Glory Days. And Just Folk caught out deep. Further back to He's a Shocker. Then Well Wall from Democracy Manifest. Caesars Pal racing up into the first turn. A good duel here at Moore Victorious and Fierce. And, and we saw last time Fierce and doesn't mind a dogfight in the lead. But a more victorious is going to declare him on. A more victorious wants the front, a half in front to Fierce. And, a, and this is a good tempo. Robusto third, followed by Palmetto on the outside, a detonator jack. Then just folk. Well, we'll cast a bit deep from He's a Shocker. Then Glory Days, Territory Express, improving ground. Followed then by Caesar's Palace. Democracy Manifest is second last. Bold Max sees them all. Racing to the turn, Fierce and a more victorious. They've really been dueling in the lead. Robusto's at a great camp behind them, then detonator Jack running on, further back to Palmetto and Just Folk, at the 350 a more victorious beat off Fierce and, but Robusto's closing in, detonator Jack's closing in on the inside detonator Jack and Robusto here's Democracy Manifest winding up on the outside, it's detonator Jack, Democracy Manifest and Territory Express late Democracy Manifest, Territory Express they hit it, oh tight tight, Territory Express lunging at Democracy Manifest Detonator Jack third, followed by Bold Mac, Just Folk, Robusta. The steam out. There's Lizzie's pick of the yard, the 14, at big, big odds. Has its nose in front. They hit it, they hit it, they hit it. You would think that J Mac, and yes, J Mac has got there. 560 to the place, Lizzie. Well, first up, but he needs everything to go his way. And the way that he wound up and hit the line, he's a clear Doncaster contender as well. But how strong is the Donny going to be? We spoke about it prior to the race. But to was fifth in the Epsom after winning the Cameron and, well, he's normally got at least three or four heading towards the Doncaster. We know the glittering record he's got in the race and they're normally... The chips are stacked. There'll be a three-year-old, there'll be a horse-like democracy manifest who's that sort of four, five, six-year-old gelding and then a mare like us who got you to sort of complete the army. Yeah, he, he was great. And the highlight of yesterday, or one of the highlights, was Simon Marshall shouting this boy home. I'm sure we'll see that later <laughs> in the week. But, um, no, it was, uh, you know, it was a soft five at the yesterday in Sydney, and they had no rain leading in as mm. well, which is... Another into some stakes racing here in Campionessa is the popular way off her Peter Young win where she had to rattle, get off the canvas, dig deep and win. She did the key. Feeding a revolutionary miss and deny knowledge last year. Shout the bar by four lengths over Barb Ray. I think it's just a great yard with some quality mares and quality fillies. If you like something on paper, I if these win this race. Coming up race five here from gate five. You'd think she'd get the one one or two pairs back. They are getting off the fence and moving beautifully down the middle. Right click. Racing. Roll on high out the back early. She does get back early anyway. Whistler last began well with also Legacies towards the inside. Legacies led Whistler last Foxy Cleopatra running by deeper. Campionessa next on the fence. Then Eternal Flame roll on high and well back in the field rumbled again. Bottom corner, 1,250 metres to go. And it's Whistler last the leader by a length and a quarter. Second is running by. Legacies is third and fourth is Foxy Cleopatra as they now string out a shape. Campionessa fifth on the inside and four off the front. Three quarters of a length, Eternal Flame roll on high and at the end is rumbled again. Wishlaw Lass the leader, 850 metres to go, steadied on that turn. From in second, running by. Legacies is third, just overdoing it a little now. Then came Foxy Cleopatra. Campionessa is next, the fence in a cushy place. Needs some luck though. Eternal Flame her outside as they reach the 700. Then came Roll on High, who's very keen to get away from the rails and rumbled again.
again is getting mobile. They slackened up front. Wishlaw Lass past the school. 500 to go just in front of running by. It's only three lengths first to last. Foxy Cleopatra three deep. Eternal Flame four deep and rumbled again. Stoking up. Campionessa needs a run and so too roll on high. Very competitive around the turn. Wishlaw Lass running by with Eternal Flame on the outside. Rumbled again is stoking up to Eternal Flame at the 150. Eternal Flame three quarters rumbled again then roll on high. Eternal Flame at the 100 from Rumbled again. A gap roll on high. Eternal Flame. Eternal Flame wins it. Rumbled again second. Campionessa up for third from Roll on High. Then Wishlaw Lass Foxy Cleopatra running by. And Legacies. The return of Ethan Brown to the top shelf of our riding rakes. Continue. Valley Pearl earlier this afternoon at listed level. Now it's a group two win for Mick Kent in the Sunline aboard Eternal Flame. And she's able to lift off what she was able to do in winning the Matron Stakes last start. That with Damien Lane aboard. Melbourne's leading rider at the moment, of course, in Sydney. For the three-year-olds, Quintessa trying to become just the second filly since 1987 to win it. She's Hutch's on top selection. Jane on top for me, zip away. I know we haven't seen the best of him here in Victoria at this point in time, but it is the best he's fronted up at the races. He looks super. 2,000 metres is going to suit. For Dad and also Apulia. For Dad, you know he's third up now, rock solid, and um, he's hard fit and he's got good figures at this track. So $6 trims up with sports bet. And then you've got Apulia as the one that they've come for. He's second up. You know he was uh, close up. Utilised here for the Alistair Clark at 2,040 metres. And they're racing. Quintessa from the centre gate broke away urgently with also for Dad John Bonrise at dawn. Sunsets and gates from outside alleys are charging forward as well. Pretty keen. It's Rise at dawn on the outside of John Bon. Gates made a line of three. Sunsets peeds out. It's three wide in fourth. They were followed by Antrim Coast and Quintessa the inside from Zip Away. They were followed next in the field by Vin. Third Rise at dawn as they really string out. Quintessa fourth the paint. Followed by Sunsets and Zip Away. Three quarters of length Andrum Coast. Then came for Dad Freight Train. Next Shinjuku is on the rails underneath of Interu who spots the speed about uh, 12 to 15. Then Basilina Apulia is getting going from the back and Snow Patrol is last of the group. A thousand metres to go. John Bond the leader. Took a breather by a length to Gates. A length and a half rise at dawn. A length and a quarter Quintessa Sunsets. They were followed by Zip Away and Andrum Coast. Two lengths for Dad. Followed by Freight Train who's niggled out on the top corner. Almost passed by into you and then Shinjuku of Puglia Basil in a snow patrol to the side of the course at the 700 metres. Gates and John Bond rise at dawn. The field's packing. Quintessa behind them's bailed away. Sunsets and around the outside for Dad. Here's a Puglia from a long way back with a searching run. Into you is coming with it and they were followed by snow patrol as they come to the corner. 400 metres to go. It's for Dad and Ad from Coast nosing sunsets. There's a run for Quintessa right up along the inside. It's coming on, Rise at Dawn wax away and for Dad presents around the turn, Quintessa railed through with for Dad and Andrum Coast Andrum Coast may be just in front for Dad, it's Andrum Coast and for Dad with Quintessa who's rallying the inside it's a great race, Andrum Coast and Quintessa, stride for stride and Quintessa Andrum Coast, a photo third zip away or for Dad and they were followed next in the field by Sunsets and Shinjuku Basilina and into you, and then Rise at Dawn of Pouliest will get up. And Antrim Coast will get up. The Kiwis had paired off, and it's Antrim Coast who was the closest to the star orchestral last start in the New Zealand Derby at a quote of 150 to 1. A shorter price today, a quarter of it, but still a sizable first leg to the William Reed Stakes Stay Quaddy. Opie Bosson gave the Philly Quintessa every chance in her quest to be the first. 50,000 to 500,000 certainly didn't impact the quality of the field. And that also on a day where we've got a Group 1 Rose Hill Guineas for the three-year-olds at 2,000 metres as well. What was different is the New Zealand Derby form line hasn't been a reference point for an Alistair Clark since the late 1990s. And Zonda Antrim Coast popped that bubble yesterday after running second to the Star Orchestral, who we'll see very soon in Sydney, heading to a winery. 
Antrim Coast was four lengths off her when second in the New Zealand Derby at a quote of 150 to one. He was a quarter of that yesterday, Hutch, and one better. Yeah, it was that one good figure that he brought, and we did say that yesterday, and look, thought it was a brilliant ride myself. Um, what's old Kestrel going to do to the uh, to demolish us? You need when she comes over. Yeah. They're not yeah. going to get anywhere near us. She's a different class to these yes. horses. Yeah, Length's better. I think we found out that Vadad probably doesn't stay beyond 2,000 metres, certainly in a, in a genuinely run race. I thought Apulia was... Disappointing. Probably headed towards the yeah. ATC Derby. All uh, South Australia. Lo loomed and then and then weakened. Six dollars. Let's play on. This is the feature, and it's all about the champion mare Imperatrice. She's unbeaten here at Mooney Valley. She loves this track and trip, and she's the one to beat. Dollar uh, seventy into a dollar sixty. Seventy percent of the turnovers suggest she is the one. Bella is chasing her tenth Group One. Plenty of positives. The defending champ yet to be defeated here at the Valley. And there were things against her perhaps in the new market that won't be factors here. Yeah. Um, well, he was good at handicap conditions last start. Can he now sort of rise to wait for age and still get the result over Imperatrice? That's questionable. He's drawn back. I would even go as far to say that this is the best parade she's produced, this preparation. She loves the Valley. Uh, she's here in her best possible. I have to beat heavily back with sports bet punters there with the champion Imperatrice. She really gets the speed, doesn't she? Hypothetical queen of the ball, cumin, all roll across, and then she's drawn out with the astrologist, the big boy, who you think will cart her into the race beautifully. So the pattern here should suit the favourite. Bella Nipatina, well, she trims up into $6 from 7 For a start, the million-dollar William Reed. Get the man back here, Lee. Ready. Ready, and they're racing. Hugh Man misses the start. The astrologist back with it. Imperatrice jump wells. She's about fifth. Hypothetical lead queen of the ball. I am me, Bella Nipatina, followed by Cylinder. Imperatrice is midfield three deep at the moment from Q Man. Then Johnny Rocker, the Inferno, and the astrologist last on the opening turn. Hypothetical is the leader. By a length and a quarter, queen of the ball at the 800 metres. Two further back is I am me outside of Cylinder. Then Bella Nipatina, Q-Man, Imperatrice is three deep, spotting the speed about seven and is forced to go forward now from the Inferno. Well back, Johnny Rocker has the back of the champ and last, the Astrologist. Hypothetical, 500 metres to go, two lengths, Queen of the Ball, I am me. Then came Cylinder, Imperatrice four off the front, almost three and coming on from Bella Nipatina, Johnny Rocker, Q-Man, the Inferno, the Astrologist. Hypothetical at the 250, comes around the corner from I am me and Imperatrice, the outside moves up swiftly. Imperatrice goes to the front from Johnny Rocker. Ryan me hypothetical. Imperatrice, 100 to go. Johnny Rocker bravely giving her a race, but it's the Kiwi wonder. Ten group ones. Imperatrice from Johnny Rocker. Ryan me Bella Nipatina, the Inferno Q-Man, hypothetical cylinder, the astrologist, and queen of the ball. Group one, ten for the ten out of ten mayor. Imperatrice goes back to back in the William Reed. The seventh to win it twice, the ninth to win it on multiple occasions. She puts her name alongside superstars like Manicato, Black Caviar and Apache Cat. In 109.99, what a performance it was. Opie Bosson's 98th Group 1, and he had to get it done and stave off the outside of the field in Johnny Rocker, who's run such a bold race. For Nick. Well, people tell me about the syndicate. Well, it's a wonderful group. And look, she was I've often told the story. So David, Alice Border at the Magic Million, she was the very last horse to sell in her year. In fact, she sat on the website, she sat on the website. Off screen, she, just the way she just, from the 600 to the 200, she just rounds them up and she likes being in clear galloping air, sort of four or five off the fence. And there's very few horses that I can recall that go as well at Mooney Valley as Imperatrice. So it'll be interesting when she goes up to Sydney for the TJ yeah. and she runs into the best sprinters in Sydney to see how she lines up. I think she will. I mean, her winning strike rate is absolutely phenomenal. So, uh, But being extremely well placed throughout. Yeah, she has. Then came Cylinder, Imperatrice four off the front, almost three and coming on from Bella Nipatina, Johnny Rocker, Q-Man, the Inferno, the Astrologist, hypothetical at the 250, comes around the corner from Miami, and Imperatrice, the outside, moves up swiftly. Imperatrice goes to the front from Johnny Rocker, Ryan Me, hypothetical. Imperatrice, 100 to go. Johnny Rocker bravely giving her a race, but it's the Kiwi wonder. Ten group ones. Imperatrice from Johnny Rocker, I and me, Bella Nippert, Five for five at the, the Valley. Her tenth group one. Seven from eight on Victorian soil. And Opie Bosson to 98 group ones. Uh, what an association she has 
he has got with Imperatrice Bossy, but... And a lot... I just love the confidence that Opie had in her. You know, he, he does what he wants to do. He's decided, yeah. down the side, I've got to get going. I'm going to put her in the race and she'll do the rest. Yeah, what about absolutely. John? to get your thoughts? Because so, there's been some reservations about going the Sydney way of going. You know, do you have any reservations about her racing in that direction? No, she's no. a proper star. She's yeah. raced both directions in New Zealand. Um, she's been... Exactly. She's bomb-proof. Um, she was narrowly beaten by Arturis. And exactly. almost perfect, didn't have perfect. a chance you know, that, in that race has to been, respond It to. has been sort of muted, hasn't it? Mm. Or muted... Uh, I, I don't know why, but, you know, I think their place is so well and she clearly does like the Valley, but I think she likes any track. I mean, look at her winning record. She's 19 from 26. <laughs> oh, no, exactly. She's not just a Valley special. I oh, know, exactly. <laughs> what a marvel. Yeah, he looks a million dollars as well. I actually had uh, my mouth agape when I saw him walk around past me. And this is Via Sistina. Look at the price she is. Uh, this is a girl who ran second to King of Steel in the champion stakes at Ascot which was unbelievable. She uh, jumped awkwardly. She was back last. Changed, and they've changed very quickly. So $2.25 favourite as well. There was more than a point and a half between them. Now, it's near on the other way. Via Sestina, $2.40 has just come in at every call and think it over. They've had no choice but to push the price out to $2.80. There's not a huge difference in terms of money held overall with Tab Fee. Five. Here's Darren Flindell. To the outside. Ready to run in the Ranford. Think it over's a bit edgy in the adjacent stall. Racing now. Who's going to lead? Plaster Casarasel jumped well, so did Think It Over. And military mission rolls forward. Then Zarek via Sestina drops back there in the white cap. And Buckaroo's going to settle last of all. Think It Over in front of the first furlong. With military mission parking on the outside. Think It Over, the post-time favourite. And about five lengths off the lead. So Think It Over at the 1,200 metres. A length on military mission. Then Zarek, a length and a half to Plaster Carousel. Then Buckaroo, the rails. And via Sestina being very... Very patiently ridden back last of all, but at the moment has plenty in the tank. They're under the handling of James McDonald, so they lead the back and think it over. Leads up the Ranford field out by length on military mission. Then they wreck from Place du Carousel. Buckaroo and Via Sestina last, so no change to the action. 7.50 metres to go, and it's Think It Over taking on the world today. Leads by a half on military mission. Then Zarek still third the rails. Place du Carousel just being nudged along in fourth position, inching a little bit closer. Now Via Sestina getting right under the coattails of her and about to hook to the outside. Think It Over swings at the 400 metres. Think It Over by a length and a half. Place du Carousel's running on Stoutly on the outside, and now Via Sestina waiting for the last crack at them, and here she comes, Via Sestina, moved up on the outside of Plastica Saracel, then think it over and Buckaroo, but Via Sestina bringing the great European form here to Sydney, and she's too classy. Via Sestina won it by a length and a half. I think Plastu Carousel second, an inch in front of Buckaroo, then think it over, Zarek and military mission. Gee, what a stunning debut by Via Sestina. You could see how confident James McDonald was in the run. This outstanding Group 1 winner, the cost of Queen's Ransom. Here's Jay Mack, sits back last on the back of the horse in the same colour as the other mare from that one from France. And a beautiful turn of foot. Buckaroo good as well. So, in a way, the internationals have... And they've pulled our pants down a bit, to be truthful, Lizzie. <laughs> yeah, look, it was a very, very strong performance. So uh, that's something to take away from it. But I also thought the other eye-catching performance, not just the two internationals, but Buckaroo, geez, he is really knocking at the door to win one of these races and uh, another good ride from Ryan Moore. Uh, Richo. Uh... They're bought out of the Northern Hemisphere by Yulong for five and a half million. This is a very important win in her career and we wait to see what might be coming after... Pretty cool ride from James McDonald. He knew what he had underneath him in the Ranvet on Via Sestina. Yeah, they were super confident with this horse. Um, like once again, I spoke to the boys before this, and Tommy Berry actually galloped his horse through the week, and he said this is a weapon. It's uh, a soft win too. Like yeah, it's a soft up. win. Hands and heels. Um, I, I <laughs> think. I think. Um, Who beats it in the Queen Elizabeth? Well, oh, all I can yes. say is that, like, Bossy, this was the win of yesterday that really sort of got your. Uh, got you going a little well, bit. Well, I think this is... From a, a futures... This is yeah. a Cox Plate horse. Yeah. Um, you know, he's only just got here. That pretty polyform is world-class, right? Yeah. Um, it's been racing against some of the best, but 
And a great result for you, Long. I mean, we're talking about how much they sip into the industry. They paid big money for alcohol-free last year, didn't get the results on the racetrack. They back up. They spend $5.5 million. Euro. (laughs) I'm not sure it matters for them. They've got so much. But it is fantastic to see people that put a huge amount into the industry get these sorts of results. Yeah, Definitely. Plot, plot. It's been a good race for Cops. Yeah, $120,000. Uh, he stands at Star de Animo at 60. Yeah, but you can see, look, he's lovely, relaxed. He's in great order. No negatives about the way that he is parading today. And also, no negativity and relax. Look how slow he's walking around. Usually, I have to really march to stand next to these horses. But he's certainly lovely and switched off, which is really important. Things for a long while, it looked a race in two. So, Riff Rocket opened up $2.50 this morning. We saw a as much as $3.10 as that price got out and interestingly it is Tab's lay of the day. We now have equal favourites with Tom Kitten there at $2.90. Now the reason they've made it lay of the day, they thought two- It's a beauty. Here's the Rose Hill Guineas. And we're all ready now. Racing in the sky, racing guineas and Cafe Millennium flopped out of the gates last. Tom Kidd and Gambare jump well, so did you, Cass on the rails. Cap Farrar being sent forward and immediately is the widest and up there contesting the lead. They're followed then by Chao Wolf on the outside of Steel Blaze, King Colorado down on the rails. King uh, Cafe Millennium's gone down to the fence now. Riff Rocket is second last and Cosmic Lad's going to settle at the rear of the field. Gambare shows the way and immediately put right up on the speed. We'll sit second. Ducasse third and Cap Farrar in fourth. Then came Tom Kitten next on the rails. A length for the back to Chaya Wolf, then King Colorado. Cafe Millennium them all about 14 off the lead. 1,200 to go. Gambare in front by a length to the unbeaten Victorian immediacy. Ducasse every hope in third. Then Cap Farrar. A length for the back to Tom Kitten. Just easing back a fraction. He's got plenty of space behind. Two lengths away to Chaya Wolf. King Colorado's down on the fence. Then still blaze from Cafe Millennium. Riff Rocket might be easing three wide here. Nash, uh, yes, just giving him a bit more space wide out. Cosmic Ladder's the last one. 800 metres to run. So Riff Rocket starts a run from back in the field. 7.50 out. Gambare in front from immediacy. They're followed by Ducasse on the inside of Cap Farrar. Tom Kitten but nailed back on the inside of Chao Wolf. And Riff Rocket's creeping into it out. Three wide coming to the turn. It's Gambare being eyeballed by immediacy. Then Cap Farrar pulling out. Ducasse back to the fence. Tom Kitten hard on the fence. Jay Wolf pulling out. And Riff Rocket coming right down the outside. Immediacy and Cap Farrar. They move up at the 300. And Cap Farrar put the head in front. Now, where are the chasers? Tom Kitten on the inside. Riff Rocket on the outside. As left thing now. Here comes Riff Rocket charging down the outside. And Riff Rocket will win the Rose Hill Guineas. Jay Wolf second. Cap Farrar clung on for third. Then immediacy Gambare and Tom Kitten every hope for the back Ducasse, a gap to King Colorado, Steel Blaze, Cafe Millennium and Cosmic Lad. So Chris Waller wins a fourth. Rose Hill Guineas, he gets his second group one for the day. Nash wins a fourth. Work, he's had to, re- had to get going at the top of the straight earlier on before the bend. So this horse has not only got a great turn of speed, he's also got a lot of stoutness in his uh, way that he finds the line. Richard, that's going to give Chris just so average days, ask Joe Pride, and here he is, he's bounced back on one of not a 70th group one and a fourth Rose Hill Guineas. A fourth Rose Hill Guineas, that's, uh, and you can see the lady walking along. Race behind Southport Tycoon producing two group one winners on Golden Slipper Day and again uh, Nash Wheeler on this occasion, his fourth win in this race, Chris Waller's fourth victory as well. James McDonald had committed to militarise, they decided to go to the George Ryder of course which he was third in behind V8 and Lady Laguna. Two and win both derbies. Yeah, he's just got a better turn of speed than all of these three-year-olds. Um, it's that simple. They, they're all just kind of one pace kind of horses. He's just got a very good change-up speed. Um, Nash rode him quite arrogantly there yesterday and he was just way too good. Yeah. And he's a genuine stayer too. Do you? Yeah, 2,400. Yeah. Well, he won the VRC derby. I know yeah, he's yeah. narrowly over a pull. Well, 
I think with the benefit of maturity, he's a better horse this that's, time That's round. a fair point. Mm. I think actually 2,000 might be his best optimum mm. trip. No doubt. And I reckon Mila to 2,000 will be his go. But I don't know about him over a bit further. No, all you have to do is relax and show a bit of turn of speed. At at, that, against your own age against group. Your, against that age group. Yeah. So you don't have to be the best stayer. No, exactly. You know, um, but I'm just sort of going forward. and. We'll yeah. get, don't we all get hyped up about these three-olds when they go into open company and they just, just go missing, don't they? <laughs> they, they just go missing. Well, unless you're a mahogany or a shogun light That's or something right, like but, that. But, you know, yeah. we get hyped up about these horses and... <laughs> Well, for him, he gets a little bit up and about and excited. He's always full of energy. We know about his setback in the week where he had a blood that his white cell counts were up, but everything is OK with him now. You can see that... Look for the ride, knock back other rides, look beautifully placed. Um, behind Celestial Legend, I thought he ran really well. Cafe Millennium didn't exactly frank that form either, did race. V8's been very heavily back late this week. What about him? Yeah, he's a beauty, this guy. Now, the blinkers go on him. I was keen on him uh, in the Australian Guineas. He didn't let me down. But Whether Joe Sauce can, in fact, get a trip, there might be a plan B. If not, and Militrise, we just want to see off the back of last start whether the real Militrise is about to step up. $4.20. It is the most popular horse in terms of money, but the biggest move has been V8, and you touched on that earlier on in the week. We've got no deductions. Williamsburg's the only horse that's come out. 15 into $7, so that is a good push, more than halving its quote. Lady Laguna at $9 alongside Amenable who just comes in another point. As you can see, we've got some big drifters. Golden Mile 26 to 61. Mighty... Stand by for a jump in the George Rider. Stand by there. Off and racing. Think about it. Jump well from the wide draw, but there's plenty rushing forward. Golden Mile is right there with V8 Bandersnatch. And Cepheus, Amenable will park just behind. Now, Clipperton's looking to get in on Think About It behind the main division of the leaders. Uh, Tis Invincible's not too far away early, together with uh, Lady Laguna. And up on the inside, Mighty Ulysses, followed by Militarised, that unspoken Navajo Peak end cap. Cosmic Vega, followed then by Pericles. Uh, Tis Invincible's back in the field, in fact, followed by Lock Eagle, Kovalika. And New Energy's last of the big field races to the 900. Uh, and Cepheus charges to the lead and think about it goes to second doing the chasing Bandersnatch on the fence third V8 well positioned two lengths away to Amenable followed by Mighty Ulysses on the inside of Golden Mile two lengths further back to Lady Laguna a similar margin to Militarise on the outside of Unspoken then came Navajo Peak end cap one off the fence Cosmic Vega the rails and further back to Pericles as they straighten up now and see if he has been challenged by think about it and think about it races to the lead Two lengths away, V8 doing the chasing, followed by Golden Mile, Lady Laguna, Militri still a long way back together with NCAP, V8 revving up now, and V8 takes the lead at the 100 from Lady Laguna running on, it's V8 and Lady Laguna, V8, Lady Laguna, V8, vroom, V8 won the George Ryder narrowly from Lady Laguna, and Militri has got going for third, followed by Think About It, further back to Golden Mile, new energy late from Cepheus, amenable Tis Invincible, then came in cap from Navajo Peak, Pericles, Lock Eagle, uh, uh, Mighty Ulysses, together with Unspoken, and Cosmic Vega was one of the last. He deserved a second in the Caulfield Guineas, second in the Australian Guineas, and after that Australian Guineas, Lizzie, he grabbed us and said, we're going to the George Rider. At the time, we thought Fangirl might be there. I'm talking about Tony McAvoy. He's been heavily backed all week. The three-year-olds won one and three. Lady Laguna was super. Think of her today. I thought one of the runs of the race has to be Lady Laguna as well. She she was running in a slipper as a two-year-old, and now she's been able to etch a Group One in her last start and run so well and go down narrowly to a genuine Group One performer. V8 militarised. Well, his biggest. Uh, fly in the ointment is him getting back and that's really tells in the end of these races and frosty's had was probably the perfect most optimum distance because that mile just sees him out but the 1500 is clearly his real pet distance he's got a good turn of to look the perfect, perfect distance, distance almost yeah. goldilocks in the three bears style the 1600 in both the caulfield and australian guineas just wasn't right for him where he's been touched off by griff and Southport Tycoon, respectively. He's run some really good races over 14, just a length off Mr Brightside, pride of Jenny and Co in the oar. They got it right yesterday, and Damien Lane again showing his champion qualities. Yeah, Damien Lane in the top three riders in Australia, without a doubt. And this horse has been ever so consistent, hasn't he? Um, I feel like an idiot for not being with him, actually, because 
He's got the best form around. He's got that bright side prior to Jenny form. Yep. He was going to get a good run. The three-year-olds have copped a bit of a bashing, I suppose, in general. But, you know, actually they've stood up pretty well. And he's, Mike, one of those cases. Love the call from Flindell as well. Uh, the vroom, vroom right at vroom. the end. <laughs> Well, he, he can put himself into a race. Like, he's yeah. got that tactical speed that when he draws a low mark, he'd had the perfect yeah, run. Exactly. On your three-year-old comment, Hutch, the needle starting to turn a little bit back the other way. Cylinder wins a new market. Yes, with the weight advantage, but now V8 grabbing a George Ryder yeah. yesterday. They're starting to get a couple on the board. Against Definitely. The I think horses. they've been a bit harsh, and then I think in the right races, they'll, they'll be very competitive, as we saw with V8. And he's... Well, he was only, what was he, uh, maybe a length and a half or two lengths off, uh, you know, Brightside in, was it? Yeah, the, yeah uh, one and a bit. Yeah, and so, you know, he's probably run to that mark yesterday. Yeah, it's been good yeah. enough. Because it means so much to her. Counting yard for the Golden Stipper Stakes. And we're going to start with the horse at every... Eaton Colt, he's pretty special when you look at him. We've heard Gay talk about him time and time again, about how strong he is and how physically masculine... And that's what I see of him every time he stepped this preparation have been absolutely breathtaking. And not only that, he's a horse that, to me, looks as though he could get to another level. He's so relaxed and switched off, and he's also very different to Stormboy. He's, he's also very different to Stormboy. He's a lot more athletic-looking. He doesn't carry her in the yard. I have always admired her, but I'm going to hand over to someone else who knows a lot more. He needs to sprinkle some... Uh, miracle dust to get a good run with Hayasugi, whereas Lady of Camelot pings... We were discussing this this morning, as we've discussed it for the past few weeks and months. What price is Storm Boy going to jump? And at the moment, it is favourite. It's 40% of the hold and $2.40. Peaked at around the $2.50 mark. A few of the big punters stepped in and said, no, 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 that's enough for us. $2.30, now back to that $2.40. Switzerland, about 40% more on Storm Boy than Switzerland at the moment with tab fixed odds. Lady of Camelot, you mentioned that early move. That was earlier on this week after the barrier draw. Steady around the $7, but money not quite the money heading to the top end of town. You can see we, we've got some huge prices about horses that were, you know, $26. Look at Shangri-La Express, $71. Set. Racing. Storm Boy was second last out of the gates. Now third last. Straight charge. Hit the gates. Running. It. Handlebars down. Shangri-La Express. Lady of Camelot there. Dublin Downs rushing forward out deep on the outside of Holmes a quarter. And now Storm Boy's recovering about six and seventh behind them. Further back to Coleman. Traffic board in the rails. Uh, Switzerland's next. Two further back to Bodyguard. Then Prost on the rails. A length and a half to Anisa. Further back, Ruta Real from Manal. And Hayasugi's last of all. So Shangri-La Shangri-La Express went up inside, straight charge to lead. Shangri-La Express, a neck to straight charge. Dublin down three wide third, followed by fully lit Lady of Camelot. Now Storm Boy is cluttered up behind runners. On the outside, Holmes are caught, traffic warden, and Switzerland in the middle of the ruck. Into the straight, Shangri-La Express just in front of straight charge. Going up the inside, fully lit, and Storm Boy, Lady of Camelot behind them, three lengths away to Switzerland. And wide out, Coleman running on. Storm Boy's got the run on the inside. Coleman wide out with Lady of Camelot. It's Coleman, Lady of Camelot. Coleman ahead in front to Lady of Camelot. Coleman, Lady of Camelot. The Lady dives and Lady of Camelot got up. Lady of Camelot, a spectacular win in the Golden Slipper. Beat Coleman and third Storm Boy in front of Traffic Warden. Further back then to Manal making good headway from Prost. Straight charge, Switzerland. Dublin down, Shangri-La Express. Anisa, bodyguard, Holmes Accord, Ruta Real and Hayasur. Have a look at that guy. Storm boy, <laughs> storm boy, he can't win. Oh, the filly, the filly. She's won an eighth. She's won an eighth. Golden slipper, Blake. Shin gets a second. Brutal. Golden slipper, storm boy, missed the kick. Had his chance maybe in the straight. Coleman nearly pulls off the heist. The filly comes through to win for Blake Shin. And Gay and Adrian do it again. And Gay gets to 160 group ones. Eight. Eight golden slippers. Quite remarkable. In a blue diamond, run second in a blue diamond and then go on and win a golden slipper. I'm not sure what to make of the rest of the field. There's so much more to unpack. As you mentioned, Stormboy had his chance. Switzerland looked as though he just was off the bit the entire race, and there were some really good runs in behind as well. But it was the most brutal golden slipper and the toughest one. That blue diamond, that blue diamond has just stood up left, right and centre, hasn't it? 
So 14 10. Let's go back to the Southern Highlands. It's footage that will live long in the memory and it can be applied to any manner of situations in life. Hutch, it's probably like watching your four kids at Little Ass thinking one of them's going to win. They transfixed on Storm Boy and whether he could win the Golden Slipper, her eighth as it was going to be, as favourite. We quickly could see that he wasn't going to be the horse to win the race up along the inside. And then the filly, oh, yeah, Lady exactly. of Camelot. Yeah. I love that sort of... Uh... Like, like that, but it's it's amazing. Amazing. It's it's amazing stages of the race. Uh, Bossy, the story is also at the other end with Storm Boy stepping slowly, and also Jamie Carr doing an incredible job to stay on. Hey, Sugi. I don't know how she stayed on, to be very honest. Uh, hey, Sugi just lost her, lost her compass after stumbling, but once Storm Boy missed the kick, um, his race was nearly over at that point. He went up on the inside in the probably the inferior, inferior ground, which it was. Um, no fault. He just had nowhere else to go. But, you know, Blake Shin, he went out and trolled this filly at Hawkesbury, deliberately rode a cold in the trial, made her get off the bridle, and her trial was everyone there, was there for everyone to see it, ripped through the line. I spoke to him before the race, uh, went into the rooms and catched up with the boys, and he was oozing with confidence about this filly. Yeah. And, and just got the job done. Yeah, yeah. His, his second Golden Slipper won 84th Group 1 in concert, but... Simo, it's been a long time since the Blue Diamond has been a reference point for the Slipper. You go back to that stretch in the Crystal Lily and obviously it's Seaboy. It's only a length or two off the standard. For it had been a while and Absolutely. it's produced the Quinella yesterday. And, and then you have a horse like Coleman who, according to Ben Mellon, was like a, a rabbit in the headlights or a deer in the headlights mm. in the Blue Diamond in just as big a field um, going the opposite direction, loomed up at the 200. It was going to be a huge result. What a difference a month months and, make in a, in a two-year-old's life too. Oh, like uh, um, Switzerland was a really... Odd run. Mm. Never travelled from the get-go. As we are discussing, he, like was he was gone at the 800. He was gone at the 800, going nowhere. But if you watch his last 200 metres, he just picks up and rips through the line. It was unusual. Like, he, he's always been a horse that's been there for... He wasn't. We've got the overhead vision of what happened at the start with Jamie Carr, very different to what yeah. Clinton McDonald was hoping for with oh, Hayasugi trying to do a, a quarter as <laughs> his late father, Ross, did. So what did you observe that had happened and then... What's going through a jockey's mind at this point when that filly just veers hard right and yep. is suddenly scratching the rail? Well, no, she, she jumped out and got it wrong and stuck. This market, Sunshine in Paris, has been really well supported. It's not the best backed runner with Tab Fixed Dolls, but as you can see from the fluctuations, eight into $4.60 at one point, and it was the outright favourite. And just as I speak, have cabin's gone out half a point, and now it is the outright favourite. That said, the Godolphin runner has, does have the majority of the money. Fifty. I don't need to say more than that. And front page, you guys mentioned twenty-six dollars the open into eleven dollars with hardly any deductions. Thirteen or more the rest, without much interest in any of them, including Kings. Light is on for the Galaxy, and we're ready to go. Racing. Oh, Osmosis has hopped up in the air and completely bungled the start. He's put himself out of play. Front page scooted out. Will lead comfortably from Asfura. Zapatea, handy, uncommon, James Forth, the rails. Then came Remark from Passive Aggressive. Over on the inside, Sunshine in Paris from King's Gambit, Derek Grove. Half cabins very wide, being taken back. Private eyes very wide. He's out in no man's land. Buenos Notches up the fence, followed by Kalos. Osmosis has got it all to do. Front page after the sharp start leads by a half on Dasfura. Uncommon James third on the inside of Zapateo. Passive aggressive out three wide. Sunshine in Paris. Three back the fence. They straighten up. And front page goes for home. Front page two in front to Asfura. Uncommon James. Then Zapateo. Sunshine in Paris back to the inside. 150 to go. Front page is kicking well. Front page a length in front of Asfura. Zapateo's launching on the outside. Sunshine in Paris late. Zapateo wide out hits the lead from Sunshine in Paris Zapatea won the Galaxy Zapatea just won it from Sunshine in Paris and the front runner front page running third then came Asfura further back to Uncommon James Wannis notches up the fence further back to Kalos then came Remark from Gambit Private Eye he had a torrid run set it half cabin and a gap back to Derry Grove and Osmosis bungled the start was never a chance and looked like Rachel was in all sorts of trouble. Kieran McAvoy equals the record, gets his third. Bill Sprinter in 13 and Russian Rizzi. So Osmos has drawn about 11, I think. Up oh the back my goodness. and look at that. She almost fell off. She has, and she's lost her iron as well, both irons. So she's kind of the moon here.
It's a full package, isn't it? Uh, a mare by Brazen Bow wins uh, for Godolphin. Well, look, it, you know, it seemed to me that a lot went wrong for Arf Cabin, so he was sort of put out of the race by some interference there early, and he just got dragged way too far back. But when I thought it was going to be the Henry Dwyer mare who'd be getting the Group 1 on her record first, well, it's proven to be that James Cummings' mare in the end prevails as for a just out of the placings yesterday. Is, well, at about the 200 hutches, we were sort of trying to do our yard at uh, the Valley and also watch this race, I thought... The Waggertown Plate's about to produce another Group 1 winner. It did with Santa and Elaine a few years ago. And front page, looked to get to the front and give a kick. And I thought, oh, hang on, we're going to see a bit of an upset here. But yeah. Zapatea able to reel it in in the closing stages. Sunshine in Paris in second. And a pretty frenetic final hour of the day for Kieran McAvoy, yeah. bossy. Runner-up on Coleman in the slipper. Wins the Galaxy on Zapatea and then fell off... Uh, Tintuki, who unfortunately had to be humanely euthanised, mm. and uh, the fall in the birthday cards left him with a leg in. Thought, oh, hang on, we're going to see a bit of an upset here, but yeah. Zapatea able to reel it in in the closing stages. Sunshine in Paris in second, and a pretty frenetic final hour of the day for Kieran McAvoy, yeah. bossy. Runner up on Coleman in the slipper, wins the Galaxy on Zapatea, and then fell off. Uh, Tintuki, who unfortunately had to be humanely euthanised mm. and uh, the fall in the birthday cards left him with a leg injury of some sort that we're still waiting for clarification.